Time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Joe Foley are here. The European Union's going against Google. Paul couldn't be happier about that. We'll talk about that. And Nokia really changing direction. Not only rumored to be getting rid of the Here Maps division, but also rumored to be buying a very big, a very big tech company for more than $16 billion. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 409, recorded Wednesday, April 15th, 2015. Here is not everywhere. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace that connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa gift card when you get a loan. And by ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 50-plus job sites, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover uh, Microsoft's latest and greatest with Mr. Paul Therott. He's from uh, his own domain, Therott.com. Great place to go to find out everything there is to know about Therott's. Not the rots. Don't go there to find out about the rots. <laughs> there will be no Therot. There's only one Therot there. There's no Therot Let me tell you something. The rest of them are not too amused by this. Oh, really? Oh, yep. oh what? I want to find out about that. But first, let's introduce his cohort, his partner in crime, Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com. Both of you back home briefly. Oh, we head back out on the road. I have literally a month solid of travel after this week. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a lot of Microsoft stuff. Yep. Coming up. You know, Lisa and I were in uh, Vegas over the uh, last couple of days for uh, the National Association of Broadcasters Convention. And I'm flying home. I'm saying, let's never leave, le let's never leave home again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Until they invent teleportation. Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh, so what's the deal with the Therat? So you have Therat.com and every other Therat in the country sure. wants it. Is that it? Yeah, there's a lot of them in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> I have the same problem with Laporte. Yeah. You know where it shows up for me is uh, in my email, because my email is laporte at gmail.com. Apparently, right. every Frenchman in the world named Laporte doesn't understand that if you put a space between your first name and last name, it all goes to Leo. <laughs> and I what? get so much email. You get like email in French. And oh, it's all in French. I get it. Yeah. And it's hard to unsubscribe to stuff in French because I don't know, you know, what's sure. happening. That's I speak awesome. a little French, but it's, you know, it's business yeah. French. So in my case, at least my name is unusual. Did you uh, adopt that name as a stage name when you became famous? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I uh, was adopted when I was three, and uh, it became my name. I didn't know that. I didn't yep. see. Here we we've worked together for four hundred and nine episodes, and I learned something about you every day. So you might not actually be by bloodline a Therat. I am literally not. <laughs> Actually, Leo, I could be wrong, but I, I, if I'm not mistaken, in the very first episode of Windows Weekly, you told me that. No, I think what I said was, my name is French-Canadian, but I am neither French nor Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Went right you're over one my of head. us, aren't you? Went right over I my head. Call. What's I that? He's, I think you're one of us, aren't you? Irish? I am. Perhaps? Are you those. Irish? You do look Irish. <laughs> I yeah. just thought it's because you've been living in Boston so long. <laughs> no, I think I live in Boston because I'm ha like half Irish. Didn't, yeah. <laughs> is, is, Didn't you know, I say I that, though, at the beginning of the show, you look like an Irish boxer? Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 and that's why I said it's because I went outside because that's exactly what happens. <laughs> you turn red, you go from yeah. white to red. I can actually, it's not like he, it's not like when you have a fever, but you, yeah, yeah, it's like a heat radiating yeah. effect. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I think of it as exposure. <laughs> you know, like a couple more days, and I'd be like that guy who had to chew off his arm to get out of the rock. <laughs> you know, <Good> Lord. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. 128 hours with Paul Therott. <laughs> yep. Uh... Okay, there is a lot of things, a lot of news, but I think you, Paul, you wish to talk about the story that <laughs> well, broke no, this, I, this morning that Google, that the European Union was going to investigate Google and finally stick it to them. Is that how you put it? Well, and, and it comes in the wake of a revelation, inadvertent, that the yeah. FTC here in the United States had plenty of evidence to go after them for exactly the same reason and for some reason well, we don't know, decided not to. Um, and so I find that to be very, very interesting and not the good kind of interesting. But the, the EU under the new competition uh, commissioner has been much more serious about Google than the last one. And uh, her first action here was to issue a uh, statement of objections for which is their form of a charge for uh, antitrust violations related to Internet search and announced that they're also going to do the same, investigate Google for Android as well, which is fantastic. So this, I think this is necessary. I think that uh, in, a, in a place like the EU where uh, Google has 90% market share, usage share, I guess, um, they need to be held to a certain standard. And they yeah, absolutely that's true. I think people don't know they're a bigger monopoly in Europe than they are in the States. Yeah, yeah, they are. A lot more. I think the uh, yeah. United States is probably something like 65%. I think it might be undercounted, but Google uh, is, which Google is happy to... <laughs> sure. Because they don't want people to know how big a monopoly they are. Um, so, what is the? What are the uh, accusations? The primary one, well, is basically that Google artificially changes its search results to favor its own services over those of competitors. And I think the thing I'd add on top of this is, if you think about Google as you know the de facto gateway to the internet, which apparently they are for ninety percent of Europe. Uh, Google has an incredible insight into what it is that people want. And they can use that information to decide to get into certain markets. And so if they see a lot of people searching for airline fares or for shopping, they could say, well, let's bolster our own stuff and let's put our service on top of uh, the, you know, the other services when people search for those items, which is what they do. Uh, and a lot of Google competitors um, have complained about this behavior. They've investigated them for, I believe, over three years. I think and like now, six, you know, years, right? six years, right? 2009, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I mean, the previous regime at the European Commission was ready to roll over. And uh, so many people complained, including politicians in the EU, but also competitors, that he had to leave office without having resolved the Google case, which he wanted to be like his crowning achievement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the new person that came in, and I won't attempt to pronounce her name, but she's uh, Danish and has an excellent name. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> no, we have to we have to practice this. I think her name is Margret Vestager. Yeah. yeah. Our Danish listeners. I'd say Margret. 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 Yeah. Margret. I don't. I would guess that the th is t, or d, and the i is right. long. But uh, that's just me. Whoever she is, she's my new favorite person. And <laughs> no, I mean she's gone after them in exactly the right way. I think. And uh, we'll see. You know, Google has uh, X number of weeks. I don't remember ten weeks or something or eight weeks to. Yeah respond to these charges it doesn't work like it does in the united states it's not like they, they you know there's no trial where they go back and forth i mean basically google responds and then they issue their decision and so it would behoove google to uh, settle uh, i think the big thing for google is that they have what happened with microsoft of course but also intel and two sharply different ways of dealing with eu antitrust yeah to fall back on as as um you know prior understanding of how eu works and they're not going to get the sweetheart deal that they did before, or, or we're going to before under Joaquin uh, Alcom. So, uh, good news. It's tough because um, Google's in a business that's truly global, and of course, these kinds of regulations are anything but global. Uh, they're, yeah. I mean, yeah. EU is actually at least more than one country, but uh, sure. it's tough because anything that the EU forces Google to do, Google in some ways must do globally. This is the problem well, there's, with the right there are, to be are, forgotten right. as well. So in the Microsoft case, when Microsoft was found guilty of antitrust abuse in the EU, um, most of the remedies did not apply worldwide, right? Microsoft made that special that's version true. of Windows. Right. Yeah. Um, they provide, but that's they did Microsoft provide documentation to developers. Company, I assume not an that was internet global. company. I mean, Google True. is, okay. an, I mean, I guess they can make well, a different uh, by version. By the way, this prior um, action regarding Google, they were forced to do the 
you know, what do they call it? The forget me ruling or whatever. Yeah, but it's hard uh, because now they're saying, oh, but the right to be forgotten is meaningless because uh, it doesn't affect the entire Google ecosystem. Yeah, and that's just, an instance of Google applying it just to the EU. Well, it's um, rightly so because the right to be forgotten is technically ridiculous. <laughs> okay. And uh, um, and shouldn't be applied to other countries where they have a little more enlightened point of view. Well, now, I don't, by the way, disagree <laughs> yeah. with you. I don't disagree with you on the... Um, these most recent action, because I've always yeah. said it's a shame Google has gotten into these side businesses because it muddies the water for search. In the U.S., it's actually, their right to do so. But I don't actually mind that Google does these other things. What I mind is that the company presents itself as this um, robot. You know, it's a, it's a giant algorithm and that everything we do is cold and mechanical and logical. When, in fact, it's just a company and it's just driving search toward its own services. And I think that stinks. I I don't think there's a problem with Google getting into flight search or shopping search or whatever these other things are. Just I think the problem the is that they're equal. artificially ruining what should be truly organic search results. What if Google's response that, well, but if you look at these other companies like Yelp, the complaining companies in TripIt, their yep. business is growing by leaps and right. bounds. How are we hurting By the way, that's them? true. But how much more would they have grown if Google wasn't stifling them? You know, that, and that's the, that's the central point. Google's business has also grown in leaps and bounds, and it's, it's grown on the backs of these other companies who, by the way, they're scraping information from. They're artificially keeping down in search results. Right. Like, it's, the, the problem isn't that these companies are all out there and they're all competing. The problem is most of those companies rely on Google to get their customers in the first place. And so thanks for throwing us a bone, Google. But, you know, if they were just doing this truly organically, those companies probably would have grown a lot more. And by the way, what has been the greatest era yet so far in internet boom times? Yeah. So yes, they've grown, but they would have grown a lot more. The ones that- And know, then the other, uh, the other uh, defense that's been proposed, and this one comes from Danny Sullivan at uh, Search Engine Land, and actually predates this uh, EU uh, uh, accusation, but goes back to the FTC documents that were released by the right. Wall Street Journal. Danny uh, says, well, that's just because they don't understand how search engines work. He says it's going to be very hard to demonstrate that Google is, in fact, prioritizing its results. I mean, I think what you have to do is say, well, uh, look at this result and then look at that result. And is that is that Google? I mean, it's hard to prove what Google's what they're what they're accusing sure. Google of. You can compare it to other search engines, which is one of the things they've yeah, done. Bing's, yeah. Bing's actually worse. Well. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, you know, Bing doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I do know, know because we did this, you know, Jeff, as you know, and we'll have a big argument uh, on uh, Twig because Jeff Jarvis thinks this is silly, I'm sure. Uh, but if <laughs> sure. you, if you sure. search, uh, what, the what, palace guard always wants to protect the King Leo. The point is, well, if you search, that, if you search uh, Bing for video, yeah. Uh, let's just see what the results are. Bing.com slash videos, Bing.com slash videos, PBS.org, dictionary definition of video, today.com, daily motion, PBS kids. YouTube's not even in the first page. Bing is. Hmm. So do you tell me? Who do you Bing go to Bing video uh, before not, you go way, to by YouTube? By the way, just from a from a simply from a business practices standpoint. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Bing's, what Bing's doing because well, Microsoft doesn't have a monopoly in search. They can artificially uh, put see. their own services in front of us because right. they're not yeah. holding to those rules. Yeah. By the way, that's I mean, this exactly is the, entire the argument point of I made with Jeff. Is that <laughs> no, I mean, it's literally Google, the, because the they're point. so dominant, has to... People, well, why doesn't Apple allow, uh, you know, uh, whatever on their platform? You know, Apple doesn't have a monopoly in anything, so it doesn't matter. Right. You know, that that's the that's the... Mm -hmm. The right. central mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, you have to have a monopoly, and then you not only have to have the monopoly, but abuse the monopoly power. That's right? the like that's the rule in the U.S. And that's extend that monopoly. That is the exactly. U.S. I think you, rule. you also no or no. In the, yeah, it's in pretty the, it's pretty close. The Sherman Antitrust Act says that you can have a monopoly. That's not illegal. Yeah, monopolies are not illegal. You cannot use your monopoly to enter a new market to to leverage into a right. new market, which is the product bundling thing that Microsoft right. got in trouble with, and which is what Google should be in trouble with. Right. Right. This is this is the point. Um, I think the primary, I mean, I'm not an expert in antitrust law, um, but, you know, I play one on TV, so what the hell? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that I, I believe that the primary difference between uh, the protection laws, it, antitrust or otherwise, between the United States and uh, the EU is that the 
the laws here are concerned with competition, yes, but actually more with consumer harm. I mean, that's right. really the bigger component yeah. of it. Right. The EU is much Europe, more it's more aggressive. about competition. Yeah. And uh, they, it was interesting. I, I looked at the language they used, and they talked about consumer harm a lot in the case of Google because I think that plays well. But I believe that the actual laws are more antitrust laws, are more concerned with fair competition. Interesting. And, you know, it's six or one half dozen, I think, you know, either way. But they're, they're, they're abusing both, obviously. Well, uh, so this does happen faster in the EU, than, as you mentioned, than it does in the U.S., how how quickly <laughs> will we will we know? It doesn't happen fast though. I mean, yeah. it, it could yeah. still they be it could be a weeks. year. You know, they have okay. ten Before. weeks to respond. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the then she's going to make some kind of a decision about what the penalty should be. Right. Based they can on appeal that, it. Right? And they can, you know, it goes on and on. Right. I mean, Honestly, one of the God, there's a monetary fine of up to six billion dollars <gasps> that is one of the possible penalties. But that will in this happen. case. That yeah, that, I doubt that will happen. But, you know, Microsoft did have to pay $2 billion in their case with the yeah, EU. Yeah, over time. But that was multiple fines. True. That's true. Yeah. I mean, the biggest so, antitrust fine in Europe was uh, Intel. Intel, and It was right? something like 1 or 1.1 $1. 1 billion. Yeah. Uh, which is was still a fraction of the possibility. I don't remember exactly what Intel's yeah. revenues were or how high that could have been. Um, I would imagine Google would be on the line for something similar. But I also think Google's going to settle this case. I think they will... Um, curb their behavior to meet the needs of the EU and only do it there. And that will be the end of that. And they'll, they'll probably, I don't know how else that's going to work, but I think that's, I think that's how this is going to end up. Yeah. But it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen, <laughs> you know, months yeah, from years now. from now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll drag it yeah. out. But you're just going to, you're going to sit on the sidelines and cheer. <laughs> no, I, I, it's actually, you know what? It, it's, it's not, it's not a celebration because, there's a lot of disappointment on the back end of this. They should have done this years ago. The FTC should yeah. have done this. Yeah. If the FTC and the EU both together were suing Google for the same things, this might have made differences in many more people's lives and in many more companies' fortunes. It would have been a bigger deal. I think that this company has kind of run amok over intellectual property, over privacy, over competitors, and many other things for a long time. And... Um, I'm glad it happened. It needs to happen. And I need to say this. I, I should say, too, it's not important to me that Google is punished. It's just important to me that the right thing happens. If there's a huge investigation and it's like, you know, actually, it wasn't as bad as we thought. That's an OK outcome, too. Right. I just think that the the literally the gatekeeper of the Internet needs to be held to a standard and needs to be monitored. I agree with you, actually. You I know? know people find that odd, but I, I do agree with you because they have so much power. Uh, uh, they so have, much. Power. Yeah. Hey, by the way, here Microsoft, listen, I I felt so strong that Microsoft needed to be broken up. When you find out how that company operated 15 years ago, it's infuriating. But <laughs> when you compare it to Google today, yeah. Similar. it's a tiny slice of humanity yeah. that they're impacting. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. No? Mary Jo's laughing. Yes. No, I, <laughs> yes. I think we uh, all but, agree. You know, no, yeah. Well. You know what? The the Microsoft comparison, though, I think plays more into the other half of this case, which is the Android mm -hmm. part of it, right? Like the comparison Ooh, yeah. shopping, okay, yeah. that's really interesting. And I feel like that's been <laughs> yeah. something that's been going on. But now they're opening this investigation into Android and are they forcing their OEMs to do certain things? That is an exact parallel to what happened in the Microsoft right. DOJ case, right? And There's a difference. And, Here's which, the biggest is, difference, which Google makes of Android available in oh. a different form. I that know. people don't have to. Of, that's well, not the same though. You may it, want it better, like but it's saying, not like Microsoft Windows. There was an open source version yeah. of Windows. You could there use. wasn't, but that no. open source Windows uh, version, uh, the open source Google Android version, whatever it is, AOSP, AOSP it's called, yeah. Yeah. is so not Android. Well, <laughs> you know, it's Android it's minus not Android Google. as we think of it. Right? It's Android yeah. minus Google. Yeah, but that but seems that's, fair. I don't well, know. But, I, I feel like if without the store. Um, and yeah, without well, if you want Google, you services. should have to do without these maps. things. Is Who it, wants an Android phone without Google Maps? Oh, I agree. Yeah. Who would ever want this well, thing? Well, Nokia or yeah. Microsoft oh, did with X. But oh, I mean people. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's not, not, <laughs> no, nobody, no, I understand. Anyone, people want that. Anyone who was yeah. educated about the purchase would never want that thing. Except that's, that yeah. Amazon does, and that's what Amazon releases. 
Um, I, I, well, you have right. to be. But, I feel what, like you have way, to be. By the way, who bought an huge... Amazon phone with not Google Maps on it? No. Well, no, but a lot of Amazon uh, tablets with uh, Android. Yeah, those aren't used for GPS. Yeah. But those you also you have to be such show. a huge, huge company to be able to do what Amazon's doing, right? Like you can't be a smaller company and possibly go out there without your own. But it's funny I mean, because you won't have your own store, Apple right? doesn't offer iOS to anybody, right. so they don't have to make any agreements with anybody. Nope. Yeah. So they're well, not at <laughs> risk where even though they're dominant, but, but what, by Google, the way, which makes a choice, gives you a choice. Is in trouble because like, of the choice. I'm gonna, listen, I could go off. I could go into the weeds on this. Uh, what happens when Apple does enter into agreements with other companies? I'll tell you what happens. They go into antitrust court with the books thing, or they're the company taking no risk and and reaping all of the rewards. And the companies they partner with are taking all the risks and getting none of the rewards. And that's what happened when Apple partners with somebody. Wireless carriers that got screwed. Uh, especially AT&T in the beginning because, you know, AT&T's network was so terrible. AT&T's network was so terrible. And then you realize, you know, actually, it was, the iPhone was freaking broken is what the problem was. <laughs> right. Like, it's classic. You know, it's just, and that's a completely different topic. I don't want to get off too far on this yeah. one. But yeah. Apple's decision, and, and this has been a long-running thing from the days of the Mac, you know, back in the early days, uh, to go it alone is uh, one strategy, you know. Partnering with other people is another strategy, and they both have benefits and they both have uh, problems. You know, Microsoft partners, Google partners, and Apple doesn't. I mean, there's just two different ways of doing business. But there are, you know, it's not perfect. Neither one of them is perfect. And uh, EU regulator in a chat room. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Marguerite, nice to have you here. <laughs> Uh, Maybe you could explain to us how that is pronounced. Actually, I, I can do that for you right now. This is uh, Forvo, <laughs> which is a site where people voluntarily record the pronunciation. Oh. Uh, we used this when there was that uh, volcano in uh, ice in Finland or wherever yes. Iceland that yes, no yes, one could, yes. no one could pronounce. Uh, so here are two Danish people pronouncing her name. Are you ready? Yes. Magrete Vestager. Much easier, Yikes. I think, than what we thought. <laughs> Uh, first of all, here's that a, in no way resembles the word that, <laughs> as it's on the Let's get the page. second opinion. Okay. Okay, I think okay. there's agreement. <laughs> there was a, I was going to say there. It sounds like Margarita. So apparently there's a Q in there somewhere. <laughs> so I was wrong about the I. No, actually I was. It was Magaita. Oh, forget it. Just we're going to call her Marguerite that, Vestager. Right. Like you if you had American. provided me with five possible pronunciations, I would have <laughs> come up with, you know, five. Magaita Vestager. I would have picked them for this one. Magaita Vestager. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, we Americans are so limited in how we think yeah. of things uh, like pronunciation. Sure. Anyway, uh, EU regulator in the chat room, uh, also known as... Magaita Vestager. Says... <laughs> That they're, what their real issue, uh, and I'm looking at the the actual EU release from my, and yeah. the uh, and the real uh, issue is whether Google has breached EU antitrust rules by hindering the development and market access of rival mobile operating systems, applications, and services. So it's it's well, again, not so much way, the deals again, they make, but do they hinder rivals? Well, actually, there are three things. Um, yeah. In fact, I've got a link to that uh, ZD article. Yeah. It's pretty good about this. But again, if you think about it from that perspective, it's about competition, yes. right? It's not, were consumers harmed because they couldn't get Google Maps? No, that's not the issue. The issue was, were, do these exclusive licensing deals preclude another mapping service, another email service, another whatever Google makes from coming on board on Android devices? And, you know, we saw this with Windows. I'm sure it's true in the Mac as well. Um, it's hard to beat something that's built in. Most people don't bother. You know, if you if you sign into a device and your email is configured in whatever mail app is on your device, why would you look at another mail app as a normal human being? People who, like us, people who listen to the show are technical and know about this stuff, yeah, they might. But why would a normal human being do that? You know? Yeah. They wouldn't. And that's why you bundle. You want to keep people locked into your stuff. And tying and bundling was the crux of the yeah it Microsoft was wasn't it case, yeah the right. Internet Explorer and, yeah right so oh, and, you know I mean 
What's what's interesting is is after Microsoft finally ten years later was no longer under the scrutiny of the Department of Justice, they started bundling again. So now you're seeing Microsoft bundle <laughs> things like OneDrive. You know what they, by the way, I asked them about that, and they said, they "Well, it's like riding a bike." <laughs> no, but it's just as easy to fall yeah. off as it is to no, fall it's, on. You know, I, I have like the I, Samsung like, Galaxy Edge. This has OneNote and Skype. It's got a. It comes with a Microsoft folder. I think. That's by the even, way. You've, you've seen the news about players. that, right? Not in <laughs> oh. the United States, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. well, you this buy is that thing from AT and T or uh, yeah, Verizon. Yeah, T-Mobile and Sprint. Those, yes. Those apps are gone. You're kidding. The wireless nope. carrier takes them off. Whoa. Yep. Yep. That is Neo messed this week up. About that. that is messed up, man. Yeah. <laughs> T-Mobile has it. Sprint has it. But Verizon it's not like you can't <laughs> re-download them. I mean, but again, to yeah. my point, the default, the tyranny of the default. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. The tyranny. You know, of the why default. would like, you know, on, even on like an HP computer, HP, which is making great computers these days, mm -hmm. bundles these apps that I think are a little strange. There's like a kind of a photo app and a little like a video app and whatever they have on there. You know, why would you do that kind of stuff? You know? Oh, it's I mean, I, but Samsung has it's, it's so such weird, crappy they, apps. They call them the milk apps, which already makes you like <laughs> nauseous. <laughs> like they get sour over time. The milk apps. Mean? And I immediately disable those. Yeah. But which, uh, by the way. Another wonderful aspect of Android, you can't delete it, <laughs> you well, know, depending on you, the app. Yeah, right? no, you can delete you everything except for those apps that the carrier or, and or the manufacturer lock in there. They have. The by the way, once we go with Google, apps. let's look at the carriers next because if there's a problem oh, they're evil. in the mobile space, oh, yeah. I'll go with, I'll go with you guys. on that one. <laughs> by the way, are the gateway to mobile, right, if you want yeah. to put it that way. Yeah, I, that's why I usually buy, uh, as you do, I know, Paul, unlocked... Uh, phones. Yeah, but, now uh, I do. Yeah. Well, the last time I got a Samsung Note, it was the Hong Kong edition, and there was some weirdness there. I'm no, you know, uh, yeah, but I find, you know, I, a lot of my Windows phones are from other places, right? And the uh, the 930 I have is from Thailand. Right. Um, I just restored it at a 535, and it comes up with, you know, in a different language. And, you know, it's an entertaining couple of minutes when you have to struggle <laughs> through the, uh, <laughs> you know, that is. the non- where do I find <laughs> the non -Latin English? Latin language that you're not familiar with? It's good. So this is this is the phone as it comes, and you see there's a little folder called Microsoft Apps. It's not on the front page; it's like the second page in, and it's just got three apps. It's got you know OneDrive, OneNote, and Skype. But I'm sure Microsoft's very happy to have that there. It's better than nothing. I mean, I, I uh, to me, Microsoft Apps in no way describes those things. You know, no, these are um, universal apps. Everybody probably I I would download them otherwise. So. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to segregate things into folders on my uh, mobile device. I wouldn't do it that way. It but I might I might have like productivity apps or yeah, office apps. I don't really or, care who made it. That's not Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's not how that's, I organize my apps. Oh, it's like, oh, Microsoft, thanks. <laughs> Delete. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, to, to in Google's uh, favor, uh, they do encourage uh, the rootability of their phones. They do. They don't, you know, actively discourage that. And, you can you can Leo, do anything just, you want. Google is a virus. Yes, and yes. this is the Android is uh, this is the one time where it, like Steve Jobs and I could hug each other and cry. We're so on the same right. page. Like his whole thing about Android and stealing from Apple. I, I have never agreed with anything in the technology world as a, like I do with that. I, I Android. I still have a hard time dealing with Android. I just when I look at it, it's like I just oh just, I love it. I mean, Irritates. I actively love it. I just, it's so great. <laughs> Seriously. I, I celebrate it. <laughs> I, I do. I love my Android phone. That's funny. And and one thing that has happened, consumers have spoken out, and so there's a lot less of that, you know, cruft on yeah. here than there used to no, be. No, I know, but, you know, how, but, but to, to, you know, how you get to this point, right? Like, how, right. Like, how do we make up all this time against Apple? We just oh, no. No, I agree with you. It's taken there, Android, you know, you know oh, what is it, evil. five versions to really... Get clean, but it's yeah. but now it's pretty good, and of course the EU is going to shut it down. And <laughs> actually, I Windows think the phone. case on the Android is a lot more tenuous uh, than the search yeah. case. Yeah, for whatever that's too. worth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I have to say, if if you're punishing Google because they didn't take the road that Apple took, which is to make it a closed ecosystem, sure. Uh, I mean, you got to, if you're going to do that, <laughs> it just doesn't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so you mean the mistake Google made was offering a free version of their operating system? Right. Yeah. I, I, and I would just point out, too, I, I don't, 
you know, Android is, uh, I guess, 80 percent ish of mobile devices or 80 percent of smartphones. I don't remember the exact number. Um, they don't really have the same kind of monopoly. It's, and it, it, let no, alone there's lots Europe. of good choices. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there, there are a lot of the bigger industrial countries in Europe, France, the UK, Germany. You know, the iPhone is going to have decent market share. It's not going to, have, you know, 5 percent or 10 percent. It's going to it's going to be higher than that. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, this one's a little. This one's a little less clear to me. Well, we'll see. And the good news is, we'll see sooner than later. God, I remember yeah. when the DOJ uh, prosecution of Microsoft began. That was right sure. about when we began Tech TV, and then six years later, right about when we ended Tech TV, that finished up. Mm. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it that was all on consuming. And on. It went on so long. It did. And of course, the I, highlight you know, of it was Bill Gates. 80 hour deposition. Yeah, but by the way, I had on videotape. Did you? And it was, oh, yes, it was a box of videotapes. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you think about like um, spending a weekend watching like something like Lost or The Sopranos, this is nothing like that. It is, it's <laughs> no. more depressing than the Godfather trilogy. It's like, it is the most awful viewing experience ever. Uh, it's terrible. But it's, a, but you've got, it's a piece of history you got there. Do you still have it? All the videos. I wonder if that's online. Yeah, I do. I, it it's be. in a box somewhere. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, hidden or anything, right? It, no, and it wasn't like that. No, you could get anyone could get it. it yeah, was, you know, you but get it. The, <laughs> the it's not like they filtered out the best bits for you. You, you know that yeah. you got like the dump of it. Like here it is. You know, yeah. and it, it's up to you to sit there. It's got to be you know hundreds of hours or whatever it is. It's terrible. Here's a uh, cut down, a five minute cut down on YouTube. What not to do during a DOJ deposition? Oh, whoever whoever advised Gates to, to be like. Do you agree that Microsoft is the world's most respected computer software company? Some people would agree with that. Some people wouldn't. What's your opinion? I think we are the most. If you took took it on a statistical basis, <laughs> yes, we'd be the most respected <laughs> software company. You watch how many hours of this? <laughs> oh, I, by the way, I think I got like seven minutes in it. <laughs> Apart from uh, the timing issue, would you agree that uh, Internet Explorer is defined here correctly as Microsoft's web browser? And did you actually read what was in there? Uh, yeah, I read the, uh, the first sentence. I can read you the whole thing if you'd like. Well, it seems strange. If you're trying to use dictionary, you might as well read what it says. Uh, you, you can show it to me. Yeah, well, I'll read it to you and I'll show it to you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord. The good old Bill Gates days. <laughs> <laughs> this is, he gets even feistier. Oh, man. Uh, the Microsoft Computer Dictionary, uh, the 1997 edition, defines killer app uh, as follows. <laughs> There's two definitions. What's he drinking? Is that a Pabst Blue well, Ribbon there? <laughs> the first definition is an application of such popularity and widespread standardization that it fuels sales of the hardware platform or operating system for which it was written. Do you agree with that definition? You're saying to me that <laughs> there's more in there and you're just reading me part of no, it? I'm going to read you the second definition as well. But, uh, the question so you were is, asking me about it without reading me the whole thing? No, sir. It gives two definitions. You're, you're familiar with dictionaries, I take it. Sometimes they have more than one oh, definition. Oh, that was term, not a correct? good thing to say. Sometimes you know. terms have more than one meaning, so right. it's actually fairly appropriate that dictionaries would give the two different meanings. Oh, and generally, before you'd ask... Okay, we're just going to... That's actually still yeah. going on. That's a live... Yeah, 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 it feels like it. It's brutal. Wow. It is brutal. It's, uh, yep. I hope I never get asked for a deposition. That's all There's so say. many books, you know, that were written about those days uh, at yeah. that time, about the trial, you know, and all the stuff they uncovered about Microsoft. It was very interesting, but it was a, a very, a very unflattering a portrait of the company. And um, I'm, I can't wait to read stuff like that about Google. I am <laughs> very excited about this. By, by the way, the judge presiding over the trial when he saw that videotape actually laughed out loud. He did. Sure. <laughs> I think I was there in court. Were you? Year. Oh, that must have I been a, so. a moment. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. It really is yeah. amazing. Oh. <sighs> okay. And by the way, I think most of that is on YouTube. Is it? Um, yeah, if you really have a hankering. You can, uh, there's there's, there's got to be an irony there somewhere, but sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Google's got it. Yeah. Look, what happens when you look at Bill Gates' deposition on Bing? Oh, you know what? That's a good question. <laughs> it really is. Just isn't, to compare but. a search engine. <laughs> <laughs> video. I'll look up uh, Bill Gates' deposition video, right? That's what we want to know. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, right, Bill, by the way, I don't know if that's Bill, uh, Bing.com videos. Yeah, as yeah but what's funny but, is they're all YouTube videos from Bing.com videos. It's a real yeah. like, let's go go to our site and then we'll take you there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Wow. God, he was such a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I love how beloved Bill Gates is, you know. I uh, well, he turned things he around. He's obviously he's, do you he's think helping he the a world. Jerk. Really? I do, but I think he's changed a lot. But he was kind of jerky then. Yeah. Like totally. uh, like wise ass acre wise acre yeah. kind of. Yeah. Well, you know, it, um, Apple had an element of this as well. When you're scrappy underdog, and then you're on top of the world, something doesn't flip in your head. You don't stop, you know, start acting differently. Yeah, yeah, you're no, still, that's right. You know, it's like you're Uber. still. It's like Uber. Acting that way. Yeah, yeah, Uber's like fighting scrappy little Uber. Yeah. 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 Um, and Steve Jobs. Yeah. Yeah. He's a sweetheart of a guy. Love him. <laughs> well, I, think, I think we've heard that a bunch. <laughs> but I think, I think you could forgive somebody like Bill or, or Steve because, uh, first of all, you didn't have to deal with him directly. <laughs> so it's easy to say, yeah, yeah, what a character. Uh, I'm not sure I would want to have been in the inner circle. But uh, they did build m amazing things. No, you did listen. These the the accomplishments of these yeah. men is unassailable. Yeah. Uh, I, of course. Yeah, I mean, you might not want to work for them. I'm not going to go away on vacation with these guys. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's hard enough reporting on them. I can tell you. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is, you guys did have more direct contact. The only yeah. closest I ever came to Bill Gates was uh, Com when Comdex one year to Spencer the Cat Party when we we danced <laughs> together. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, not together, but he was like right there. In sure. a group. White man's he must be a good dancer. Just like that. <laughs> Sticks out his butt, bites his lower lip. It's a beautiful thing. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Let's take a break. Unless you want to say anything more about this Google thing. No. Whew, once again, <gasps> an hour in and we're, we're already finished one story. <laughs> well, that's the big story. You after, you know, after all these years, we've gotten really good at making this thing just run like an oiled machine. <laughs> You know that we will spend much time on it in a couple hours on This Week in Google. This is going to be, and Jeff will have the opposite point of view. So yeah. um, it's, good yeah. to, it's good to have yeah. that. Uh, uh, our show today brought to you by those great people at Prosper, a very great uh, example of how the Internet is changing the way we do so many things, making transactions f f nearly friction-free, in this case, borrowing money. Uh, you know, the, in the past, the, you know, you'd go to, you could ask a friend, oh, that's, that's, or a relative, that's not going to go well. Uh, maybe at first, and then it goes south, I guarantee you. You will lose the relationship. Uh, you could go to uh, uh, Jimmy the Greek down at the bar. I wouldn't. You could go to a bank, hat in hand, put on a necktie and all that stuff. Now there's another choice. Prosper is a marketplace that brings people who want to lend money out to people who want to borrow money. It kind of simplifies the transactions, much more direct drive. You could get, in fact, if you thought, of, if you wanted, if you're interested, a low fixed rate loan from Prosper.com in as little as five days, as much as thirty-five thousand dollars, and use it for just about anything you want. I, you know, paying off high rate credit cards is one of the most common uh, uses for these loans uh, because the rate is so much lower than what you're paying on the credit card. It's just, it's the right thing to do. Just consolidate all that debt. You could fix up the house. You could put it into your business. Prosper's online marketplace connects people who need money with those who want to invest. Don't rack up more debt on your credit cards. Pay them off with Prosper. Don't have, don't don't share one bathroom with fifteen people. <laughs> Remodel to check your low rate instantly without affecting your good credit. Go to Prosper.com/twit and for a limited time, Prosper's offering Twit viewers a fifty dollars Visa gift card with your low interest loan. You can get up to $35,000 in your account as in few as five days and a $50 Visa gift card. Go to prosper.com slash twit for this special offer. Prosper.com slash twit. Windows Weekly, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. Um, continuing on, let's talk about Microsoft. When, I just got my uh, update on my 1520 for Windows 10 Mobile. So, uh, I good. think I did. <laughs> well, I'm on the fast track and it said I had an update, but I don't know. You know, I, I'm not looking at it right now. So is it coming? Well, you know, last week when we had Gabe all on the show. He said he, Friday. He, he said Friday, right? And I and think I got something. Time. Yeah, but I he think. He gave us a time. You didn't get something? Yeah. 
No, well, I was just going to say what happened on Friday at the time when he said it was going to come across, they they had a server error. Oh. And so everybody's hitting the server trying to get oh. the build. And then they had to take it offline for two hours. So a few people got the build okay. and then they had to take it down and fix it. So because various things are blocking okay. people get being able to get the bits. So it was it was a little rocky Friday. Let's, yeah, let's a little. It was a little. <laughs> happens. What's, I think let, me, it really, let me tell you how rocky it was. It was uh, <laughs> one p.m. was the time that if one p.m. Eastern was the time this thing was going to go out. I had it on my phone at uh, I think it was five p.m. So that's why a, I didn't notice because that's I, rocky. I didn't rush at one p.m. Yeah. Eastern to get it. I just waited. But the awesome minutes. thing, yeah. Leo, is once you finally do get it installed. It is really terrible. <laughs> so, so you got that going for you. <laughs> it's not good. I okay. So the first thing it asked me to do, it says make a password for this phone, which I thought I did. But anyway, make a password for this phone, and then I entered a password, and then I kept clicking OK, and nothing happened. I couldn't oh. actually yeah. do anything. Like none of the buttons were live anymore. Oh, then you did get it. <laughs> <laughs> so so I got go. it, huh? <laughs> That's how you so prove first, it. Let, let's say let's say what was what people were supposed to see. It was it was going to have a lot of new things, right? Mm -hmm. It was going to have the Spartan browser, yeah, the new browser yeah, for yeah, the first time. Yeah. A bunch of the new Universal apps, so Outlook Mail and Outlook Calendar right. were going to be right. in there. And remember um, too, a lot more phones. That was the big deal. I yes, mean, really a lot up, more phones. phones. Yeah, this and my is, 1520 got yeah. something. Yeah. Right. This is what yeah. we expected yeah. from the initial release. It was right. a nice list. Yeah. Yes. So then when people got it, a lot, well, I can tell you this week on my Twitter feed, everyone <laughs> almost in my feed is complaining that they don't like how the new universal apps look because they feel like yeah. what made them very distinguishable as Windows phone apps has gone away and now they look pretty much like Android apps. Yep. And yep. people don't like that too much. At least a lot of the people on my Twitter feed do not. Hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I think I understand why they're doing this. Part of the, even though universal apps means universal across Windows platforms, part of what Microsoft is doing, especially with Office when they talk about universal, is they're taking the code base that is also the code base for iOS and Android, and they're trying to use as much of that as possible in building these apps. So they're going to start looking more alike. I yeah, think. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but people didn't like that too much. Um, and that that seems to be one of the biggest bones of contention. Plus, you couldn't use any of your Office files, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, because that has been disabled in this build. Oh. Uh, they're in the midst of redoing the Office mobile hub, so uh, you can't use that anymore. I think alarms don't work now. I mean, there's just a bunch of things that because stuff, it's a yeah. test build. A lot of networking works. issues, too. You know, so but, there are people who yeah. can't enable or disable Wi-Fi or airplane mode, things like that. Yeah. So don't do it if you're not willing to take a chance exactly. with a technical preview, right? Exactly. It's and not you know, done. I, but, yeah. I was so happy after I started reading uh, people's reports that, that the you didn't get Lumia it. icon could not get this build because yeah. I was thinking about taking it and I'm like, oh, thank mm -hmm. goodness I couldn't mm -hmm. get that build. <laughs> yeah, because you no, use it as your day-to-day -day phone. You don't want to do yeah. that. I, no, and this I have is an another extra phone icon me, so. too. I have an oh, extra icon. I was going to say, you, you, yeah, use a, use a second phone if you yeah. can. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. The, the, here's the problem, and we don't really have this in the notes, I don't think, but I've heard this now from multiple people, including uh, Lance McCarthy recently, where, you know, people will install this build and they'll say, oh, you know, this is really kind of garbage. I want to go back to Windows Phone 8.1. And Microsoft actually has two different utilities that will do this. Leo, you used one to bork your 1520. <laughs> oh, yes, that was a Nokia. <laughs> well, by the way, you suddenly have company because I, I believe you were the first person on earth to have a brick of phone. I, using I'm that not phone. alone, all right, am I? Now a lot of people are bricking their I phones. noticed, and I got it, a lot no, of people it's saying it's really that. weird. Yeah. It, it, this, this has never really happened. Yeah. And uh, the sheer number of people that are having this issue is kind of troubling. I've actually brought a few phones back using the, those one of those recovery tools, um, and I've had no issues. But a lot of people have. Yeah. So. Yeah. Be lots careful. of good reasons to try this build. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's one thing to uh, have an update that you're not crazy about. It's another thing to brick your phone. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was able to send my phone to a good home. A uh, fellow did brain surgery on it, took the screen off, put it on his. And uh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
I'm a trendsetter. What can I say? <laughs> I, I, th I do think you were first. <laughs> yeah. Not a good, and not in a good way. Um, yeah. Some people are not getting. Yeah. yeah. Well, they thought they were going to get. What is? Right. This is interesting. Yeah. Go ahead. I know. Well, yeah, you're the one who I think first pointed this out, or one of the first people who did. So no, people, I wasn't. some. You weren't? Okay. No. Some people, when they started trying to get the Windows 10 mobile build, they were getting something else um, instead of that when they were downloading. And it turns out, I think it was Windows Phone GDR2. Is that right? Wow. Or you, yeah, yeah, GDR2. It's like getting a golden, a golden yeah. ticket in your Wonka bar. That's great. <laughs> Which, by the but way, is a... Yeah, I was we don't know ask a lot you, about do you, it. You don't have to have GDR2 to have this... Windows 10 build, right? Like, no. it's not a Most, prerequisite. No one, no, no one has this right now, except for uh, some people Lumia who, 640 users, yeah. Oh, only 640, okay. Um, so. Yeah, so some people get that, and then that was a mistake, but they ended up getting that. And I don't know if afterwards they also get Windows Yeah, you uh, can get, so, some of them do, some of them don't. And on, <laughs> okay. on my, what did I do with that phone? Yeah. Um, I kept it on one of my phones. You know, because I want to, you know, every once in a while something new will crop up that, you know, is new to this release. Is it on here? Um, but, yeah, I, I think the, the way it's supposed to work is it would just keep going, you know. But I yeah. guess you could just keep it on that build if you wanted to. I mean, there's no reason yeah. to <laughs> upgrade if you don't want to. Yeah. It was, let's just say Friday probably was a really tough day. And oh, when you were sitting in Gabe Alls' poor chair. Gabe. <laughs> poor Gabe. I feel bad. You know, you met him. He's a great guy. He's great. Um, <laughs> that was not a good day. Mm. No. <laughs> it was just not a no. good day. Yeah. I saw him at one point. Somebody said to him, Gabe, why aren't you answering my question? And he said, I'm getting 300 tweets per minute. I'm sorry. <gasps> I'm doing my best. Yeah. 300 <laughs> tweets a minute. Wow. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> wow. He had a bad yeah. day. He had a bad day. No good, terrible, very bad day. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so. I've seen people worrying about this because they say, that a lot of people are saying, if this is mid-April right now, and Microsoft said Windows 10 is going to RTM this summer and things are this rough, can they really right. do this? Um, and, you know, one one thing I'll point out there is we haven't heard that that summer date means every version of Windows 10. It may just mean Windows 10 for the desktop. It may not mean mobile. We don't know that level of granularity, so they may have a little more time. Uh, plus, once they RTM, especially on the phone, they still can keep updating the operating system because then the carriers and the handset makers both have to test it. So that usually delays it by quite a bit as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. You know, it, it does look very rough from everything I've read and And actually, seen. <laughs> um, from past history, we know with Windows Phone, you know, even if these things are RTM'd on the same day, so maybe it's August or whatever. Yeah. Windows 10 yeah. is done, you know. Um, yeah. Between that date and the date that carriers actually put the software on phone, months go by and Microsoft ships further updates. They have RTM Windows Phone in the past, understanding that updates would go out after the release. This is something we saw with, uh, I don't remember if it was 8.0 or 8.1, when they finally you know opened the developer preview program. It must have, it must have been 8.1, where we started seeing updates after the supposed final right. version of it, because that's how yep. that works. So yep. you know that could be part of the planning as well. I think it is. I mean, I think even after Windows 10 RTMs on any platform, the plan is to keep updating it every every month or even more frequently maybe with new features and fixes. So it's not really done, you know. It's never uh, done. Paul, there's, there's somebody else on Twitter, um, <laughs> one of our one of our listeners who goes by Sherlock Holmes. He yes. he said he got he got GDR2 on the Lumia 730 when he was downloading it yeah too. i'm trying to, i can't remember which one i got it on now it's really yeah funny wow yeah yeah so yeah it was a mess but um hopefully there's another build around the corner <laughs> it'll fix it Did, well. and, and paul you, you yes. mentioned there are two tools to to uh roll it back what what are the two tools people want to know so uh the first one is called the windows phone i think this is called the windows phone recovery tool uh, which is supposed to work with every Windows Phone device. And so right now, only um, Lumias are getting uh, Windows 10 preview. So it you know it doesn't really matter now. But in the future, that might be more important if you have an HTC or Samsung or whatever. Um, there's, a, there's also a tool that used to be called, it used to be called, the, the, that was the one you used, the Nokia Software Recovery Tool, I think it was called. And now it's called the Lumia. Let's look it up here. Yeah, um, I think that was it. Now it's called the Lumia Software Recovery Tool. 
It's slightly different UIs. It does the same exact thing. It, it pulls down, it looks at your phone, says this is the latest retail image for your device based on not just the hardware, but the, you know, where the phone's from. Because if you're an AT&T, let's say, and they haven't rolled out update one or something, you're not going to get update one. You'll get, you'll go back to, you know, Windows 8 one, the original release or whatever. Um, and so the difference between the two tools, I think, other than the UI, is that the Lumia version is just for Lumias. And I think the Windows phone recovery tool is for, um, you know, all Windows phone devices. Yeah, yeah Windows phone recovery tool. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. <laughs> Mary Jo's not going to do it anyway. Uh, I'm going to wait. Recommend it. <laughs> I am definitely <laughs> going to really wait don't. because, yeah, when I was watching what people were doing and going through, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm interested in seeing this, but I'm not that interested. <laughs> well, even like, you know, I Saturday morning, um, the day after, I got up and I think, you know, this is going to be a good day. It's not going to be like <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I started upgrading phones and it's gonna I got Windows day. Phone, you know, update two, GDR2. And I thought, all right, I need to slow this down. Oh, so <laughs> you, you know, were one of the like, people who did. This, this is just weird, <laughs> you know, because originally I was like, I'm going to put this on a bunch of phones, you know. Yeah. And I think no. I got it on two or three and I actually mm. rolled back yeah. at least two. Of them. Wow. Um, that bad. It's just not worth. Mm. Yeah, it's just not worth so don't do it, kids. You may be tempted. Don't do it. Uh, yeah. Some new low-end handsets. When are we going to... I want to get a new flagship phone. High-end handset. Yeah, <laughs> but not, not, in the, yeah. not in the offing. One of the new things that Microsoft does is, uh, since it's taken over the Lumia line, is it will announce a, a, a low-end Lumia handset, as it does, I think, every three days. And uh, it will announce the pricing in U.S. dollars. And then it will say, uh, this will be available at whatever time in... EMA, in Asia, in Italy, in Indonesia, and wherever it is, but never in the United States. And so the pricing is always in U.S. dollars, <laughs> but the, the device itself, is it's not available here. So, yeah. That's because yeah, American greenbacks are the gold standard for currency everywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, if you're going to pick <laughs> one, right. they could, I mean, what? <laughs> if they could pick one. What one are you going to pick? Rubles? Well, I would pick the one that was the biggest uh, market for maybe. which the phone would be yeah. sold. <laughs> so, you but know, I would pick maybe offensive. in this case That might be Euro. culturally offensive. Okay. All right. It could be. I figure they just say, hey, we're an American company. We're going to use American greenbacks, even though, ha ha, you can't get it. I see US dollars, it. and I think, oh, that's exciting. I want to buy this one buy for $50. Right. right. Where do I do that? Oh, I don't. That's a side effect they didn't think about. Or they just don't care. Or they don't care. So the 540 dual SIM Lumia. Uh, How much is that low in American dollars? Another Snapdragon 200, you know, like because we needed one, another one of those. Five-inch <laughs> screen, 720p. Why do they do it's, this? Why? 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 I, yeah. Why do we do we need another one? If this sounds a lot like other phones that they've announced in the past three months, I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know. I don't know. Is it it the comes with SIM? Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not a selfie phone right i mean or actually it, it is it has a selfie okay. camera so but is the dual sim what makes it different no they're right? all dual no. sim yeah i mean a lot yeah. of, the dual sim is very common and yeah, they're all dual yeah. sim that's how you know yeah. it's not going to be sold in the no, 720p is about as high as they're going to go these days on yeah. the screen yeah, five inch screens fine. you know um that's fine oh well, somebody said yeah, they should uh, 200 seriously like seriously <laughs> but I just, I just what? don't know what the differentiator is. Did you is. get these things on sale? It's, it's like, <laughs> you know, they come, they they're in like a cereal box yeah. or something. Like, yeah. We got a truckload of, no truckload of, Snapdragon two hundreds and. Hey, uh, who ordered the two million Snapdragon two hundred <laughs> processor? Oh, that guy got laid off. <laughs> what are we gonna do with these things? <laughs> Make more phones. Yeah. Make more Lumias. You like the blue though, the new HD LTE. I do like the Scion. Yeah, it's called the Scion. Cyan. The color. Cyan. That's confusing. The company's name is Blue. The phone's name is the Cyan. The update's oh, name you're is talking Cyan. About the, I'm sorry. Blue. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what the are you Cyan talking about? Oh, so the Lumia is called yeah, a Cyan? The Lumia Blue is called Cyan. I never. No, I, no I'm confused. Mary Jo, are sorry. you following this? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too many Cyans, not enough bittersweet. <laughs> I'm so confused. So, Let's okay, talk about the sorry. Blue this, HD LTE. It's a better phone. Right. 
says Paul. So this one's available in the United States. Oh. It's $200. Uh, Ooh, that's no a contract. little pricey. I don't know. But it's a mid-level phone. It's got a new processor, too. It's a Snapdragon 410. Um, it's a 5-inch screen, 720p. It's uh, nice construction. It's got a same camera, 8, well, same rear camera, 8 megapixel rear camera. Um, it's not a Lumia device, so you don't get the Lumia apps, which could be a problem for some people. But um, when you compare it to, say, like, um, the most comparable Lumia is probably like an 830, Lumia 830. In the United States, that thing, no contract, is over $400. Uh, if you buy it no contract from an international, like on Amazon, it's about, I think it was 170 ish dollars. Oh. But it doesn't do LTE. Oh. So the, the blue device, the blue Win HD uh, LTE is two hundred dollars. So it's twenty five dollars more, but it does LTE. It does have dual SIMs. I don't actually think that's a big deal here in the U.S., but it does do dual SIMs if you want that. Um, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's 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 a nice phone. I mean, I I don't immediately dispense this one sort of in my head like I do with the the Lumia Five, whatever we're calling it, Five Forty. Um, God, these model numbers are like Oldsmobiles from the seventies. It's like, really what are they remember. doing? <laughs> Well, it's all tied to the uh, the number of uh, horses under the hood, or maybe it's the no. number of cubic centimeters. The cylinders or the, yeah. you know, it's like, what, what's a Oldsmobile 442? It's like four doors, <laughs> four tires. And... <laughs> Two passengers. I don't know. Like, what, what is the point of this? I don't know. Who wrote this That's article? You want Houston. the best mobile platform for Microsoft apps? Try iOS. Oh, it's under <laughs> therot.com. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, as a, as a long running uh, advocate of Apple's platforms, I thought I would just remind <laughs> you. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I, I just kind of look, if you just look at the world as it is today and, and Microsoft's moving to this, you know, I almost said devices and services, uh, you know, this mobile first, cloud first kind of thing. Um, where the most apps are from them is on iOS. Yep. And it's not just the most apps, it's the best apps, like the, the quality of them is better. Even when there were versions on Android, the Android versions are often in preview, whereas the ones on iOS are more full featured and they're just kind of out there and they work right. And there are unique apps. There are certain apps that are only on iOS, like Sway, you know, for example. And it's only iPhone. Uh, I like Sway though. I only see. on the iPhone. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't even use the iPhone full time, obviously. Yeah. But I looked at the Microsoft apps I have on my iPhone and there's a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah. And there's a lot more yeah. of them in the store that I don't have. I mean, yeah. it's very interesting to me. Is this but hedging their change. bets or is it what Satya Nadella said, we just want to be everywhere our users are? I think it's both. Yeah. Just in case this Windows yeah. thing it's only I think thing it's doesn't, both. doesn't go. Some of it's catch up. You know, a lot of mobile first cloud first is we get to get out there and get on these platforms. And Android came a little more slowly, I think, because Apple or Microsoft had years of experience on Apple's platforms previously they had a lot of people that knew you know, the language that you would program in the programming environment i think they were able to get it up and going a little more quickly and i think the android stuff and i'm, I'm conjecturing here I, I don't really know but my guess is it took them a little longer to get ramped up on on android and I, android has challenges too there's so many different devices device types you know screens and you know it's a mess it's like windows so you, it's a it's a different thing. I think on Apple and the Apple side, it's a little easier, you know, to come up with an app that's going to work right because you don't target as many different types of devices too. By the way, but it's uh, an interesting thing, you know. Uh, the Apple one is the best one, you know, if you're a Microsoft guy. Yeah, well, it's got to be a little frustrating. Or a gal. Somebody said yeah. I was sexist yeah. today for referring to Microsoft guys. Yeah, or gal. <laughs> Greg Bilton says it's 400 cubic inches. Four, <laughs> this is four four two. Yeah, no, of course speeds. it's like four on the floor. And yeah, four on the floor. Yeah, two, two carbs. Those. Oh, two carbs. Two carburetors. Well, two carburetors. But now Eric Duckman says I don't no, think it's there two were ever exhausts. Four, 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 four twos. Oh, yeah. two exhausts, absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, we used to joke about that. Well, I had a friend who had a 442, so it was like four. I can't remember the joke anymore. It was like four, <laughs> like two four doors. Tires, four, two, four tires. Four, four doors. Four cylinders, two <laughs> engines. You know, which is the exact opposite of what that car was. <laughs> Yeah, I know it was two on the floor was part of it. Yeah. Or four on the floor. Four sorry. on the floor. It was, and he, it was literally a four-speed stick shift. God, my car has like 30 speeds. You needed to be able to like bench press 200 pounds to shift this <laughs> thing to it. But it wasn't like a, 
<laughs> electronically assisted or anything. It was like a stick coming up yeah. out of the floor. It was made well, out of metal. It was direct to the metal. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> you were literally changing metal in the engine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Those were the days when driving yeah, was, it was driving. Workout. It was nice. Um, so, a couple of things going on with Nokia. Uh, it, they've said they've made noises that they might want to sell off the here maps, the whole mapping division. Yep. And then they apparently are putting in a bid for uh, Alcatel Lucent, which I, I I believe means they will become a networking company. I think, in other words, what they've decided is this is the business. Yeah, Nokia is now yeah. this. Thing. Get rid of the nav. Which, by the way, explains the tablet they announced. But, <laughs> you know, well, whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to sell those. But I think, you know, again. maybe this is the direction. Yeah. And also, I think, um, in the patent business, licensing business, because you can yeah. bet with Alcatel. They still have Lucent. that division. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to pick up a lot of patents. Lucent guy has a ton of them. Yeah. Yeah. How much did Microsoft pay these guys? Was it $7.2 billion? It was. Wow. So, And how much are they going to acquire uh, Alcatel and Nartel, whatever it is? What's the price there? It was more than 7.2, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was 6.2 billion or something. I can't remember. That. Was it? Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. But it was like getting money stock. from your parents to buy a car. No, it's a stock, you know? though. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. 16.6 billion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's more. 17 billion. 17 wow. billion yeah. dollars. I mean, I can't. I, I would imagine a lot of that is in stock or something. It I is. It's they, almost all stock, I think. I can't imagine they have this cash. It is. It's all stock, yeah. The uh, check from Microsoft is like sitting on the guy's dresser. He still hasn't put it in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> it's a you really know? interesting um, <clears throat> end for Lucent because Lucent, of course, used to be Bell Labs. Right. Oh, right. Yep. Where Unix was invented. Mm -hmm. right. C programming language was invented. So much of the modern Which, world was invented. By the way, I would just point out, Mary Jo said something about patents and that's the other part of their business. Yeah. Ultimately, this is what happens to those companies. Because when your only business is licensing patents and then suing people that aren't licensing your patents, you can make a little run with that. But that's not like this is not like a long term business, you know. I mean, eventually you get bought as new yeah. markets come up and people want that technology or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But it was funny when when the word about them maybe selling off here came out. Uh, it was like late last week. A Bloomberg report said that Nokia might be selling the Here Maps division. So many people on Twitter were like, that's stupid. That is never going to happen. That's too valuable. Sure. I can't believe anyone's even thinking that. And yeah. today mm -hmm. they confirmed, yes, we yeah. were yeah, thinking yeah. about spending Yeah, we're shopping it around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And one of the potential buyers, by the way, is who's been mentioned is Uber. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yes. that's true. That's yeah. how cash rich they are. Yes. Wow. Um, and, you know, everyone's wondering, what about Microsoft? Because Microsoft does use here technology in, in yeah. conjunction with Bing yeah. Maps. Yeah. And they did buy the other parts of Nokia, even though they did lay off they half wanted of here. people. You know, I, I've read conflicting things about that now. I read I read that Steve Ballmer wanted... it was too wanted, expensive, Daisy. Yeah. Steve Ballmer wanted it. The board said no. And then I've other, read other reports saying, well, Nokia never was going to sell it to them anyway. And they were, wanted to keep it. Here's the thing. Um, I think strategically it makes sense for Microsoft, but the real reason for Microsoft to buy it is so that someone else doesn't get it. Imagine if yeah. Apple bought it right. or Yahoo right. bought it. You know, you don't want it falling into the hands of someone who, A, may not be interested in licensing it to you anymore, and B, may no longer need you because now they have their own mapping technology. Yeah. Basically, my strategy is always go nuclear. I, think, I don't know if that's obvious <laughs> yet, but <laughs> I, mean, I think that's how they should do it. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be interesting. And and Nokia did say today they are investigating the idea of selling here, but they didn't say we are trying to sell here. Um, right. So it's still not confirmed, but it kind of makes sense with this other thing. Like, like it's a complete realignment of the company. Right. It does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and um, I think it was Bloomberg who pointed out that here maps right now is valued at 2 billion. Uh, but when Nokia bought, Navtech, it they bought them for eight billion. Wow. So they're, at this point, so they're just trying to recover something. At least six hundred and fifty million today. <laughs> yeah, but well, that's the thing. Remember that this is ch this landscape's changed yeah. a lot. Navtech. It has. There were yeah. two companies, Navtech and was it Tel, Telenav, that really had all the mapping. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so that was a big thing. You were buying half yeah. the GPS market when you bought bought one of them. Right. And it was a big deal that Nokia bought that, but the but and this is just shows you how fast this stuff moves. That wasn't that long ago. 
Right. No. But standalone GPS is the whole world ma of mapping has been completely changed by Google. Yep. And uh, and Apple to a lesser degree. So yep. now you've got to figure. I think Apple could really uh, benefit from here. They need some, you know, more yeah. data. Yep. And you know, Microsoft's always trying to spend offshore cash. So well, both both companies, right? Don't want to repatriate yep. cash. Right. Uber's so an interesting sense. play. I know yeah. that is. At, and the other rumored buyer is a conglomerate of German car companies. <laughs> well, that would make According sense. That would save yep. probably save the money, right? Because they can. Right. Yeah. Uber buying stuff. here maps is like um, Gateway buying Amiga. You know. Yeah, it's a bad idea. Yeah, it's a it's bad like idea. I sort of understand, and we can just kiss that goodbye. I, yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it would be a bad thing that, for that would just consumers. be spiraling. Yeah. 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 And I would hope that Nokia would want to sell to somebody that's going to do something good with the division. I like the here Microsoft Microsoft is uh, familiar with writing big checks with their name on it. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> I want to give them a shot. I would. Yeah, guess. I like I like the here map stuff too. Oh, I love look, it. And I you can download it. those maps. Uh, I've downloaded mm -hmm. all of Europe and North America yep. on my little phone here. I mean, it's kind of amazing, really. Yeah, it is. And so now I can use it offline. I mean, it's it's mind boggling. Yeah, it's neat. We used it in Vietnam. Everywhere we went, we yep. we downloaded the maps, and they were really we use accurate. Them in Europe, and we do this exact exactly. You, you you download the maps, and you're offline, and it works great. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when we were in Nam, we used it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we used it, yeah, sure. Sure. But you know what was interesting? In Cambodia, they didn't have maps. At uh, all? Offline offline maps they didn't have. Um, Here so it yeah. isn't. It's not everywhere. Oh, right? that's Here's interesting. Not every hmm. Here is not everywhere. Hmm. It's, it's not <laughs> there. Let me, let me, hold on. I need to think about that one. Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, boy, I think both. it's a great value to both Microsoft and Apple. But Microsoft, given that there's a question mark about its mobile going mm. forward... What reluctant. do you mean, Leo? I've never heard that. <laughs> I'd be reluctant to. <laughs> I think it's more valuable to Apple than anybody. What are you saying? I think, I think Although, that Apple will outbid everybody. Is what Although I'm saying. Microsoft, you can make the case now that they're cross-platform. They could try to say, hey, we're going to put here maps on every platform. Part of our cross-platform strategy. Why do they want to do that, though? We want to get here maps just so we can put it back on iOS. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft. Then, if you believe the freemium strategy, right, there'll be free maps, but then there's going to be something that is... Paid. Jeez, oh, here we go. If you want no, offline will. maps, you have to subscribe to here 365. Oh, God. I could see that, actually. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Could. It could be. Yep. I predict. <laughs> I should never have uttered those words. Somewhere a light went off in Redmond with someone who's like, you know. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> minute. He might be right. <laughs> he was joking, but that's an excellent Quick, idea. Quick, <laughs> Get me Elop on the phone. Oh, no. He's Wusi. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Actually, it would be Elop. Would it? Yeah. You know, Elop runs the mobile business. Yeah. Give me Elop. Quick. Uh, I think, okay, I predict a massive bidding war is going on right now between at least Microsoft and Apple, maybe some other companies. I, I think but the effect of putting out feelers like Nokia did. Oh, yeah, that's smart. why they're doing it's it. It's going to generate the excitement yeah. that will be even greater than they expected. And uh, who knows? They may decide. Look at all the excitement. It's really worth something. Let's hold on to it, no, which would be a no, huge no, no. mistake. Now's why it's now is the time, guys. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Sell it while it's hot. I think so. Yeah, I think this is that they raised that trial balloon, expecting a little bit of a you know it's like dipping a can of tuna fish into a piranha basin. They're <laughs> yep. <laughs> they're just waiting. They're waiting. Yep. They'd be smart. I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, although if Apple gets here, somebody's pointing out, they'll probably kill it on iOS, on uh, Android and Windows Phone and make it yes. iOS only, right? Oh, yes. Ooh. It's so horrible. <laughs> oh, that's why Microsoft's okay. well, we'll got a bid. We'll all be using iPhones per my article, so it's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I dread a future. What a world. What a world. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. I dread that. I, I really think Microsoft should do everything they can to get this. I think they have. I think they have to. I mean, I think the sky's yeah. the limit. I, I, I looked this up at the time, but I, I think the license f for here mapping technology, location stuff, was four years, possibly five. Yeah. And I assume that whoever purchases it would have to uh, live up to that agreement. But we're about a year in now. I mean, mm. I don't know. Is the thought that Bing Maps mm. is going to? go off and be its own thing and be good enough for that. I, I mean, that stuff is tough. Navigation with 
right. live updates and traffic and Apple learned that lesson. Yep. Yeah, you can't just you know whip it up. Can't just show, you can't just call it map.app and think it's going to yeah. work. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's very difficult. That's really interesting. I hadn't really uh, you know kind of thought it out in my mind, but that's a really interesting. And Google, uh, Google wants is sitting pretty. They're the ones with all the data, the years of uh, research. Well, this is where they the insane ways. Google thing makes sense. You know, they they're the biggest data collecting entity on earth. I mean. Them doing maps does make sense. I wish Google Maps was on Windows, you know, Windows Phone. I mean, uh, my wife's, you know, when we're out in the world and we're doing stuff around here with maps, my wife's phone is always up to date. It's, al it's always mm -hmm. adjusting the route because of an accident occurred. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always really up to date. Um, the Nokia one's like, oh, no, you'll have no problem getting to the airport in 20 minutes. That's how long it takes. Really? Because it's 5 p.m. Are you sure it's going to take 20 minutes? <laughs> Mary you know, Joe and then like Cambodia, an hour and 35 you... minutes later, you've been watching it kind of recalibrating yeah. the time. Oh, no, I guess time. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, Maps is a tough one. It's not like a, I'm trying to think of it. It's not like a notepad app. <laughs> no, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a very a big data. It's a, it's a big data hard computer science issue. And that's why Google's so good at it. It's a big data app. In Cambodia, did you end up using Google Maps, Mary Jo? Um, what did we do? No, I don't know what we did. Oh, what, one of my friends had an Android phone. So, yeah. And he used Google Maps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Like, wait, what did we do? No, you, just, you just don't have offline capabilities, basically. Right. right. Actually, you do even then. Well, for a route. For a route, you Ahead do. of time. Yeah. yeah. If you remember, you can download, a, you yeah. know, an area on Google on yeah. Google's uh, Maps. But, yeah, no, I think nobody knows that. It's well hidden. I, at some point, Google is going to have to do offline maps. I yeah. can't believe they haven't. And at that point, you're kind of running out of advantages for here. You know? Do you think there's some skittishness, though, given how f rapidly this has changed? I mean, whatever well, happened to MapQuest? On, <laughs> you know, you mean on, Google's, on Google's part? or in, No, just in yeah. general. I, yeah. I, it, it's oh. hard to look four years ahead and say you know where mapping is going to be. Okay, but I, I know Google's going to be there. I yeah. mean, I think oh, no, Google is right. the one that's the no question. I, yeah. I Here, I you know, I like it, but... Well, that's what that I'm saying. How much is it worth, yeah. really? Yeah. Right. Oh, you want to sell it now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, by the way, if tomorrow Google announced offline maps for everybody, I mean, the value of here goes down about 50% uh, right there. Uh, I mean. uh, I don't know. Here maps, they're in cars and all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah. yeah, that's who's uh, that's it's who, a, the it's other a dwindling. It's still a dwindling. The other group, of course, as you mentioned, German car manufacturers, whatever the car makers might very much want here to get. But now, well, you know what they're doing now, though, and the smart thing for them to do is the in-car stuff with Apple and Android. Yeah, um, where you just bring your phone and it goes okay. Well, that's smart for car makers too because they don't have to deal. They don't with have this to stuff deal with it. They don't right. have to update it. Yeah. Their cycle, their update cycle, is so different. Out of touch with it. It's like, how did we make this work? You implemented Bluetooth. Yeah. We're done. Yeah, done. Yeah. You know, done. Uh, yeah. so. um, hey, you know what's uh, really exciting? The Surface 3. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and you I, guys. I, 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 excuse this criticism, Leo. Not your best segue. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, wait a minute how about this <laughs> guess guess what's really exciting the surface three and paul and mary joe are soaking in it yeah is that better i like that mm -hmm. no all right i used it um this week i i took it with me as my exclusive machine one day when i was out and about so i was soaking in it all day and there were good things there were bad things um i i think um I, I've been surprised how much I am constrained by the new keyboard. I know really? it's not really that much thinner, but man, I feel so cramped typing on that thing. Yeah. Do you? Yes. I mean, my hand, first of all, I have giant gorilla hands. So yes. Yeah. I, honestly, yeah. the funny thing about the keyboard is it's not that much smaller. I know. Than other it's keyboards. Not that it is smaller. smaller, but I, I for, yeah. there's something about it because you're kind of on top of it. You feel. Yeah. I wonder if it, and that's why I made the comment, I made this comment on Twitter and I was roundly ridiculed for this, but if you could separate it from the tablet and use it yeah. kind of like a Bluetooth keyboard, I actually yeah. think that would alleviate part of the problem. But, you know, obviously you can't. 
That's right. interesting though. Yeah, I, I certainly feel that way. Yeah, and, and you know, I always say before I talk about typing, because we all, what we do for our jobs, we type a lot. And I yep. think a lot of people who may use this device exactly. will type a couple yeah. emails and then they'll like be done. But we sit there and we type and we type and we type. At the end, my hands were so cramped. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I want a real yeah. keyboard. You guys are professional well, typers, really. But, uh, it it yeah. is aimed at students. Yeah. And it it's also and aimed at uh, mobile professionals. I mean, I... Yeah. I but you don't have any problem with the Surface typing. Pro keyboard, just just this new th Surface Three. There's it. The other keyboard is a spec wider, and it's yeah. not a ton wider, but it just that little difference. I just feel like I can type way better on the original type keyboard than I can on this one. Mm -hmm. Not sure yeah. why. Um, yeah, I I like the weight though. Very light very well balanced. The battery held on for the whole day, just barely, which was good. Um, and all I was doing was tweet deck. Um, what else was I doing? I didn't have a ton of things running and, and it still really, um, used up my battery quite a bit. Not sure why, <laughs> but connected standby working better. I'm, I'm very happy about that. So when you're not using it, it seems like your battery isn't just being eaten away like it right. was, at least for me on the Surface RT. That RT. I mean, my battery was done no matter what I did. So that's good. Yeah, I've been doing battery tests. And uh, one of the things I've been doing is, you know, run a couple of videos in a row and then let it sit and gauge the battery life when you left it compared to when you come back. And there's a little, there's a little leakage there. And it's not very precise, obviously, to do it that way. But um, it's definitely better than these devices used to be. Mm. Well, one thing I don't want to have with anything I carry around is leakage. <laughs> right. No. right. I'm not not good. Um, and <laughs> let's get the latest on Loopgate. No. <laughs> I wrote I, saw this I wrote what I consider to be my no. most important story ever, Leo. <laughs> oh. The story of Surface Pen Loop. An ode to the loop. <sighs> oh, how I it's love thee, Loop. Let me count the ways. Should, you want me to read it uh, dramatic? No. Get a dramatic reading for you? No, no. An ode <laughs> to surface pen, Loop. Mm, look, there it is in all its pristine beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that Loop in uh, French is boucle pour stylet? Or in uh, Spanish is Bouche porta plumas? Stylet. Porta plumas, bouche pour style uh, is really good. Porta Bucle. plumas, Bucle. Is good uh, porta plumas, porta plumas. I love that. Like Loop plumas is such a is... prosaic name. Yeah, let's go. Let's all call them from now on. Hey, did you get the uh, porta plumas? Le, le, le bouche, le bu boucle, <laughs> boucle, le bouche. Um, so. <laughs> why? Okay, I'm going to ask you why you yep. put the credit card receipt in the uh, article. I'm trying to show you how small Surface Loop is. <laughs> so if you look at if you look at the if you look at the next picture, yeah. you'll see that it's smaller than the credit card I used to make the purchase. <laughs> Paul, you've really gone in depth. This yeah. is that's the point. In depth research. You had an unboxing. I, I saw Did you do it. an unboxing of the Loop? I mean, sorry, well, the no, this, is, this is just the the whole. Oh my God! Yep. He he's got a problem. Oh a loop problem. my! You gotta read that paragraph. Right there. Read Fully that, read extended, that. the Surface Pen Loop packaging magically extends by two point five times its original size. I don't know how Microsoft accomplished this magic, but based on a recent viewing of Interstellar, I suspect. Some form of wormhole, a singularity is at play, where physics, as I understand it, is expanded into additional dimensions. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this? Microsoft helpfully provides instructions for the exact placement and orientation of Surface Pen Loop on your type cover, and it does so without using a single written word in any language. This too may be dun, seen dun, as dun. magic. <clears throat> it's incredible. But you know, this loop looks so much better than third party loops. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It does have that authenticity thing going for it. 
Didn't Look, somebody I, do a, a mock-up of a, a loop with a Therat logo? I think I saw yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, that's what I want. A signature edition loop. Oh, yep. forget the mug. I want the Therat logo <laughs> loop. That's what we're talking. I know. I think yeah. that's your new giveaway <sighs> at, at events. I'm going to be careful because I'm running my, my battery tests, but I put my... Where is it? Look at that. So I got my logo on the on the Surface Three. Oh, that's nice. nice. That's pretty. So you can get those as stickers now. Soon, I'm kind of testing stickers. <laughs> You're well, doing I, a beta. I hope you put sticker. the same obsessive attention to detail into that <laughs> as you did into this loop article. Yeah, yeah. you know I will. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> The key, of course, is the adhesive. It's protected under a thin plastic cover that, when removed, could stick Surface Pen Loop to virtually any surface. The key is to stick it to the type cover and not, say, the table. I can do this, I thought, and I removed the plastic cover. Here, Ugh. I admit, this, my courage failed. I'm really as this ple uh, displeased at something I've done. Why? This is awesome! <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm perhaps overly happy with this. I think this is the best article you've ever written, Paul. Ferrat. I think a, I, that was my point. This Look at that action shot. The Delphi 3 Super Bible for its... <laughs> I, that you're not the first person to note that. <laughs> Attention to detail. Oh, the fit was snug. <laughs> <laughs> what if the adhesive, not as magical as I was led to believe, separated from the back of the type cover while I was inserting the pen? Perhaps I should have waited, given the adhesive time to do its thing. Perhaps I... No. It just worked. <laughs> There's nothing too small and too inexpensive not to obsess over. That looks good. Nicely, John Dunn. How many pictures are in this article? One, two, three... <laughs> This is this rivals the Verge's Apple Watch review in its it wow well, production value. I told you the, the the greatest thing a reader ever said to me, right? When I was I went to the Windows Seven launch event in the Netherlands in Amsterdam or in the in the Hague, and I was signing copies of Windows Seven Secrets. And the guy this guy waited in line and he said, "Let me ask you a question." If Windows 7 is so easy to use, why is your book over a thousand pages long? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it's padded with screenshots. <laughs> they can, they yeah. tend to fill up the space. Hellcat says, and I agree with him, I smell a Pulitzer here. <laughs> yes, a Pulitzer, as we call it. A Pulitzer. Mm. Yeah, a Pulitzer. So you Bostonians sure. know how to pronounce that correctly. A lot, of, a lot of people in the in the rest of the country call it a Pulitzer, but we know yeah. better. We know it's, better. Yeah. It's a Pulitzer. It sounds <laughs> it sounds ignorant when you say it. it sounds so that. ignorant <laughs> when you say Pulitzer. Pulitzer. I'm listening to that Steve Jobs uh, book, which I know you hate, Paul, but actually I like a lot. No, no, you misunderstand. <laughs> I, 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 I think there's a, the agenda that he set out for himself was not achieved. I mean, I, I think what we've discovered at the end of this book is that Steve Jobs is exactly what we thought he was. Right. But. Yeah. No, it's no, it's not revelatory in any way. It's. By the know. way, here's a re well, here's a revelation, and I, I, I accused Apple of this when it happened. In whatever year, uh, uh, you know, Steve Jobs got on stage at MacWorld after CES. Yeah. And said, "I, I'm, I've invented this thing called the digital hub." And the Mac is going to sit at the end, in the middle of this hub, and all your devices are around it. And you show this big picture, and I said, "Wow, Microsoft just, just announced that at CES like three weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and and I, I think what I wrote at the time was something along the lines of: A, no one is ever going to remember Microsoft did this first, and B, it's it's possible, even likely, that they came to the same conclusion at the same time. Okay, fine. And we all know how the future went. I mean, they, Apple got it right, Microsoft didn't. It doesn't really matter. In the book, some guy from Apple saw the CS keynote, went to Jobs and said, "You got to change everything. We got to do this." <laughs> yeah, like it wasn't. It, it, they literally copied it. Yeah, from Microsoft. Yeah. That was actually That's good to amazing. read that. Yeah, That's amazing. Uh, Schlender in the book says uh, that basically Bill Gates gave Steve Jobs his marching orders. Yeah, here's what you should do. Well, I'll let, I'll let history record that little fact. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> next time you want to call anyone innovative, yeah. You know? yeah. 
The saying. only thing I'm listening to, uh, to an audiobook version of it, and the only thing yeah. that's driving me crazy. We were talking about pronunci the reader. Mis mispronunciations. Yeah, the guy doesn't. He says silicone. Does he call it Valley. iOS? OSX. Oh. oh um. And it's driving sure. me nuts. It's like, didn't you? And uh, by the way, no blame to Steve Audible on this. Jobs strode Jobs. to the podium. I know. If he'd if he'd been pronouncing it Jobs, I would have really had him. But uh, but it's no blame to Audible because the publisher made the audio book, and you would think the publisher would have just asked one of the authors, hey. But the funniest part is he's going, at first there was OS 9, then there was OS X. It's like, no. in the brain, Think. maybe just turn that on yep. there for a moment. <laughs> Think what would come after OS 9? I can't wait for OS Y. <laughs> Why not? So we have that. It's called Windows RT. <laughs> oh. oh. Ow. Sorry. <laughs> Burn. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Um, God, are we? For, this is the longest show in the history of. The I know. Sorry. It is. It's, all, it's my fault. I, I know. Uh, Emirates is giving all all its pilots Surface Threes. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. So them. you know what? It turns out this isn't necessarily a scoop. I heard about this from someone inside the company, but actually, if I'm not mistaken, this was in the day one press release. So oh, we can just put well, it's a good story. <laughs> so, Love it. I heard uh, about this separately. That you know, but. I Although, when you put it in the day one press release, that's pretty much an admission that you paid Emirates to do that by giving them all of these really? so that well, you could okay. put it in uh, the so, press release. So, maybe. Maybe? Um, Microsoft and Emirates, well, no, because they actually have a history of working together. All Microsoft right. and Emirates uh, date back to Windows 8, the original Windows 8 launch. In fact, um, I had an opportunity to go and, and ended up not going, but they, they did a big event out in Dubai and uh, it was around Windows 8 and the original Surface. And... I think that what this is is actually an upgrade of the existing Surface devices. So it kind of makes sense that they would work with this partner who they had already worked with on a new version of a product. So I, I don't know that it's a, uh, quite as nefarious as maybe as you might think it is. I don't know. but I, I, I not nefarious. I'm just it's that just that when you, when you announce a new product and as part of the announcement announce how it's being adopted by somebody, it's not mm -hmm. the same as saying somebody looked at it, chose it, thought about it, compared it to other products. Right? I mean... They, well, they, how would they know to choose it if they hadn't even seen well, it? Well, of course, of course they saw it. I mean, I... Well, they did, obviously. I mean, you know, they show partners things early. I don't... Right. Yeah, all right. No, no, I'm not knocking it. Hey, as we said, all's fair in love and technology. As long as you don't have a monopoly. That's right. Right. <laughs> Are there Hyper V the issues come off. on the Surface Three? You seem they seem you seem to be worried about that. Any what issues? Hyper V issues. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I think uh, I've been writing my review of this thing. I'm, I'm doing battery testing now. I think this is the last big thing I have to get done and, and be clear about. But I think the problem with Surface Pro, uh, Surface Three is that a lot of people look at it and they they want it to do too much. You know, and people like you know, does it run Visual Studio? How does it run Photoshop? You know, can you do all this stuff at the same time? Can you run games? Can you do this? You know, and it's like, guys, this is really designed to be a productivity machine. Thin, yeah. light, yeah. good battery life. Yeah. Students, yeah. mobile professionals, you know, that kind of thing. So I did test out all these things. Um, the processor, the platform that's underneath this actually does support the hardware virtualization features that are required for Hyper-V. However... They're not enabled. And if you go into the firmware, there is no control to enable them. Hmm. So unless Microsoft fixes the firmware and gives you that switch, uh, you can't run Hyper-V, meaning you can't do a lot of the on-device. Mary Jo, why are you laughing so much? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's intentional, to be frank. No, I sorry. think Mary Jo doesn't like Hyper-V. <laughs> I, I am the biggest Hyper-V She fan loves Hyper-V. It's all she ever talks I about. I do. Hadoop? No, I just laughed because I saw someone's tweet who said, I want, no need, an audible book of an ode to the Surface Pen Loop oh. narrated by Leo Laporte. Oh, That's why I was we could laughing. get some beautiful music behind it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's why I laughed, actually. Mm. <laughs> Not because of Hyper-V. Mm. That's very true. <laughs> Not a laughing man. No, I mean, uh, honestly, my, in my testing of this thing, I mean, desktop application, obviously, compatibility is great. Uh, Hyper-V notwithstanding. Docking station capability means you can use it as a desktop PC. The Surface Pen means you can use it as a, an actual tablet. It works. It's not like a capacitive you know, stylus. It's an actual active pen with 256 uh, degrees of Kevin Bacon separation, whatever, of uh, pressure sensitivity. Um, 
it's it's impressive. I mean, uh, oh, the other issue with Hyper-V, of course, is that you would need uh, Windows 8.1 Pro, which I installed to test this. The retail versions of this come with um, Windows 8.1 Core, which doesn't include Hyper-V. Um, but, in fact, if you want to get it that way, if you're a student or a business, you'll be able to buy it through resellers, uh, resellers and get it for, I think it's $50 more uh, with the Windows 8.1 Pro if you want to get that. Excuse me one moment. Okay. I have to note a milestone in my battery test. Oh, good. It's ongoing <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, did it die? Yep. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm playing, I'm streaming video, so I get it. Oh. New movie. Yep. You should just get all all six Star Wars movies, run them over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over and over. What music would I use for an ode to the pen? I know. It's like a... <laughs> What's that? Uh, is it the William Tolliver? Is it a da 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 yeah, like like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they're running around in the spring. And yeah. It's, you know. na, 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 na. Yep. <laughs> Come on, chat room. You know the name. I know the name. I just not. It's not coming to me. I know it's part of the William Tell, but which part of the William Tell is it? Carmina Burana. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little Probably bit different not a good mood choice. we're trying to express here. <laughs> A little bit, a uh, little bit different. Uh, I think it's the beautiful Galatea. Is that it? No, that's not it. I need something beautiful, something peaceful. This might work. <laughs> An ode. To the pen loop. A true story. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I like, you know, you'll see a movie and it'll say something like, it, they always say it like the pukiest possible. <laughs> like, based upon true events. True events. <laughs> it's based, like ba based upon what? Upon true events. <sighs> Chapter one. <laughs> I meet the loop. Um, can it run Android apps? Uh, so there's something called Blue Stacks, which you probably yeah. know is not very yeah. good, and it yeah. works, but it's slow. Yeah. There are other Android solutions which seem to be better, but the good ones rely on hardware virtualization, which you can't enable on this device. So I actually think that eventually this thing will be a decent platform for that kind of thing. I mean, the issue, of course, is that what you want is for those apps to run in a window or full screen or whatever, but be... Uh, kind of outside of that environment. Like, in other words, you probably have the Android thing running in the background, but they're not inside of its, you know, like a big window with all Android apps. Like, you want it, you know, pinned to the taskbar, running in its own process, seemingly. You could alt-tab to it and all that kind of stuff. So it's not, that part of it's not great. Not right now. Yeah, yeah but that BlueStacks, that's kind of, it's more BlueStacks problem, I think, than Windows. Probably, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, and why would you want to run Android apps? Well, because the other half of the Surface 3 equation is the tablet half. And right. the, we're, that's where Windows really lacks. Right. Um, there are many games, especially, but apps uh, that are available on the Android side. It would be amazing to have a handful of those. Um, for example, the Android version of uh, the Kindle software is fantastic. The Windows version is terrible. I'd love yeah. to have the Android version of that yeah. app. It would probably kill battery life. Though. It, it would be... It, it wouldn't. It's not going to work out. Well, you're not understand. alone. You're not alone, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Oh man. No. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 here we go. Sometimes it's the little things. Literally. <laughs> this past weekend, I visited the Microsoft Store in Boston, with the express purpose of acquiring a Surface Pen Loop, and ending the nightmare of owning a Surface Pen, but having no place to secure it. <laughs> Maybe. I think I need... I'm going to work on the music. we got to work on the music. Then I'm sending I, it uh, off to Audible. This thing is... It's like this big. <laughs> so I was holding it, and I said, do you have a little bag that would, you know... <laughs> 
<laughs> I can just kind of carry it around in. And she's like, the girl, the woman who worked at the store is like, no, I wish we did. That would be awesome. And as I was holding it up, some guy walks up and he says, what is that? Ooh. And I said, it's a it's a surface pen loop. It's it's for that surface thing. And he goes, it looks like an Apple thing. He goes, can you imagine how much that would cost at an oh, Apple that's store? That's right, Probably 79 like bucks, bucks, yeah. Like, this is like an impromptu <laughs> ragging on Apple that occurred in the uh, Microsoft store. <laughs> I wanted just to move in, you know? <laughs> it was nice. Oh, boy. Well, now there's a uh, Photoshop of the unicorn with the ninja cat holding the pen loop oh, as Lord. the flag. Oh, I just Lord. forwarded this to Paul, and yeah. I said, oh. It's also fantastic. Oh, Lord. Or Nick Nicolaisen, who's listening, he said, you guys seen this? Yep, there it you've is. Created, <laughs> you've created a monster, Mr. Thoreau. I know. Yep. He has. He has. Some people's yeah. Windows Insider Hub app is showing them Windows 10 build 10061. I know. I saw somebody say that this morning, too. Yeah. What's, What's that all about? Again? One, oh, you mean a different build of Windows 10? 161. Right. Desktop. Okay. I think desktop, right? Yeah. Not not mobile. Oh, I'm, not, desktop, I'm, not I'm sure they're talking about desktop, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I saw know. somebody tweet that this morning and said, did you guys see it's out? But I don't think it is out. Um, there's been no notice of it at being out. So uh -huh. not sure okay. if that's there's a There's no way it's out. like out. I mean, the whole world no. would be exploding no. with right. this. Right. Yep. Uh, back to the notes. Yes. <laughs> Office news. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can whip through the office news here. All right. Okay. So one one interesting item that happened after Windows Weekly last week was uh, Microsoft and Dropbox extending their existing partnership so that now if you are using Office Online, which is the free web version of Office, you can just add your Drop Dropbox cloud storage to that and they're integrated. Speaking so as a Dropbox have... user, I love that. But why would That's Microsoft great. do that? Uh great given that they have a competitive product? I I believe it's because many files that are stored in Dropbox are Office yeah, files. Yeah. Um, That's probably what happened, is, right? Dropbox went to Microsoft and said, see all these doc files? <laughs> <laughs> you really ought to do something about this. Well, yeah. I, by the way, uh, that's something that doesn't cost Microsoft anything. You, you use Office. You use their storage. Yeah. That's a kind of a win-win for Microsoft. Yeah, I guess so. It's another cross-platform thing in a way. Right. It's, yep. it's like you're we'll you're an office you customer. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure that's so. the com conversation they had. Yeah. Yeah. This is I our know. new thing. This is what we do. Yep. We want to make it easy for the customer. I love that. I mean, I just that that's awesome. Yep. And in fact, it makes me more inclined to use OneDrive because I don't feel like they're being yep. so uh, you know anti possessive. Possessive. Yeah. 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 Uh, and they also said if you're an Office 365 business customer, um, Dropbox for business functionality is going to be integrated that way, too. So that's pretty cool <clears throat> also. Boy, am I glad we did not install that link server we were thinking about for you, Mary Jo. <laughs> we thought, oh, that's going to be the best way to Skype in people like Paul and Mary Jo. Yeah. Guess not. But now maybe they're still using it. They're just rebranding it, Skype for business? Yes. Okay, so it's still Basically. Link. It is. Link backbone still. Okay. Right. All right. Um, but they're calling it Skype for Business, and this week it went generally available. So it's starting to roll out this week to Office 365 customers. Um, so you, you're going to get the new client, the new um, Skype for Business client. That's what you're going to see first. Then they're going to be gradually integrating more of the functionality on the back end. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while for this to roll out. And if you're using the... Um, link client on Mac or uh, the iOS or Android version, it's going to be a matter of weeks, I guess, until we yeah. hear how that's going to roll. Well, Skype's the bigger brand name. I, that makes sense. Now it's yeah. the only brand name, Leo. It is. I knew about Link only because of you guys, but in, in business, yeah. is Link well-known? I mean, is it it's a well-known brand? Actually, I would. I don't think so. I yeah. mean, but Skype is well known. Regardless, it used to be Office Communicator. Right, you know, they've had a they've change. Never had, oh, right. yeah. never had good yeah. branding on it. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's the least well known of the right. kind of mainstream Office servers. Right. You know, or, or the so parts of Office. This is really just a rebranding, uh, but it's the same technology as Link. Yeah. yeah. Same backbone. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Some different functionality in the client, but it's they're trying to make it more. 
uh, a case if you're familiar with Skype, it's going to look more familiar yes. to you if you use this yes. client. So. Good. This is kind of, Microsoft's yeah. kind of not done much with Skype, so it's good to see them starting to make that change. Yeah. Kurt Del Benny. He's back. Kurt Del Actually, you might want to look up the pronunciation of that one, too. Benny. I know. Ben. Is it Kurt no, I believe Del that is correct. I think it's got to be. Del Bene. Del Bene, because it's Italian. So. It's of the like good. Del Bene. <laughs> Del Bene. Molto Bene. Yeah, so he he is rejoining Microsoft, uh, which is very interesting. He was a longtime veteran, like 20 plus year veteran at Microsoft. He His last position there was president of the office division. And then he left to go help fix healthcare.gov. Um, he, oh, he left Microsoft man. to go good do man. that. Uh, then went to Madrona Ventures as a venture capitalist for a brief period. And this week, Microsoft said he's rejoining in a new role, which is head of corporate strategy and planning for the whole company and reporting to Nadella. So this is a pretty big high level role for this guy. He was he was pretty well liked in Microsoft. Yeah, I was going to ask you what your I take was to. on him. Yeah. Um, people who worked with him really, I, I think, liked working with him. He had been there a long time. He, he's an engineering guy um, and had a lot of respect from the engineering staff, from people I had talked to. Um, Is there so any indication I, that he was, because when he left, there was, um, that was when the one Microsoft reorg happened, right? He wasn't kind of left on the doorstop or anything, was he? I no, mean, no, he wasn't. He, he um, was still running office. He was, he was in the yeah. senior leadership team and all that. So I think it was just more of a case of he wanted to do something bigger and he got tapped for that bigger role, healthcare.gov. So he's back though. Good news. A lot of people I, I've heard from are pretty jazzed that he's coming back. And an, another kind of interesting side note for people who like to follow the inner baseball kind of stuff at Microsoft. Um, as, at the same time as he's coming back, Mark Penn, you know, who had been um, the guy who ran That's the Spurgle it. campaign, he um, also had in his title for a while, corporate strategist, chief corporate strategy officer, I believe. Now he is becoming chief insights officer. <laughs> so he's like, a, <laughs> he's like a feature of office now. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy. It's like, hey, Mark, I heard can you who, give us some insights over here? I'm surprised yeah. he didn't go to work with Hillary now that she's running I know. again. Maybe he's going to. No, I don't think they uh, that ended on a... On a good note. On a good no. note. I think she note. she fired him because he wasn't running her primary yeah. campaign very well. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Are you suggesting <laughs> that Mark Penn is not perfect? Oh, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, all that. he's perfect. <laughs> Politics, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Data Zen. I saw this in the news. I didn't know whether this is a big deal or not. Yeah, I mean... Uh, another company Microsoft bought, they've been on a buying spree so far this year. This is a Toronto-based mobile business intelligence company called Data Zen Software that they bought. We don't know how much they paid for them. Uh, but the, um, they do cross-platform business intelligence software. So this is, again, part of the whole cross-platform push and a more emphasis for Microsoft on business intelligence and data visualization uh, so it fits in, in a variety of ways with the whole productivity and platforms and cross-platform missions at the company. And they said, we're going to hear more in the coming months, how they're going to incorporate this into their existing product lineup, but probably will fit in with Power BI, which is their business intelligence stuff. Good. BI is big. BI is big. Yeah. Um, and nice office mix update. That's Paul. What is Office Mix and why is it nice and <laughs> Office Mix is awesome. Has the Office details. Mix is a plugin for oh, yeah. uh, for PowerPoint 2013, right? That allows you to broadcast your uh, presentations in new, in a new form called a mix, which can be interactive, that can be video based, uh, and so on. But the 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 update that just came out provides two features. Uh, one of which is well, both of which are really cool. One of them is actually really hard to implement, but um, the cool one is the ability to have slide notes while you're recording the mix, which is important because obviously you, if you take really good notes, you can basically read along to it and not have to stutter through it and make mistakes and start and stop and so forth. It's fairly obvious. It works really well. It looks like a teleprompter, which is kind of cool. Um, the other one, which is equally cool, is uh, closed captioning support, which is especially important for 
um, for mixes because they're pre-recorded, so you can add that captioning capability. Um, the problem is it's it's a really lengthy process, and you can't do it just in the tool. You have to use a third-party tool to actually create the subtitles. Then you import them in. They have to be in a very specific uh, XML-based format and so forth. So there's a little bit of work to doing captions, which is a little unfortunate, and hopefully that gets easier over time. But still, um, kind of a neat addition. Well, if it's a neat addition, I'm all for it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Back of the book coming up, ZipRecruiter.com, our sponsor today. ZipRecruiter is going to help you find new employees. It's a, You know, it's kind of a pain in the butt if you're the person who has to do the hiring, you know? The uh, HR department, or if you're a small business, you're doing it yourself. All those phone calls and emails. You know, every time you post a listing, you go, oh, gosh, now I have to go through a whole bunch of... ZipRecruiter makes it so much easier. First of all, you don't have to worry about which is the right job site to post it to. ZipRecruiter posts to 50 job sites with one click of the mouse. So you're everywhere, which uh, you might say, oh, great, now I'm really going to get a lot of uh, traffic. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I promise you, you won't mind because of ZipRecruiter's great interface. In fact, not only... Do they post to 50-plus job boards with a single click of the mouse? They also plus post to Craigslist and Twitter and Facebook, all the social sites. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. That's what you want to uh, check out. They even, because they know this, you're going to love ZipRecruiter and their interface, they even offer something called Traffic Boost. It's a premium product that gives you even more candidates, up to three times more candidates. But wait, you say, Leo, I don't want all those emails to my inbox. Don't worry, you won't get them, nor will you get phone calls because it all filters into ZipRecruiter's incredible interface, which lets you quickly screen applicants, rate them, and hire the right person fast. They have this locked down. This is, this is exactly what you've been looking for. I got to tell you, you're going to love it. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. We love it. We use it. In fact, we like it so much, we've arranged for a, a, a deal for you. Zip Recruiter free for the first four days and 30% off your first traffic boost. Wow. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. This is the modern way to post a job and hire the right person fast. So much better. Just try it. Just, you know, try it for free once, and I promise you, you'll know what I'm talking about. ZipRecruiter.com. Slash Winders. We spell Winders, W-I-N-D-O-W-S. In case there's any confusion whatsoever. Paul Thorat, Mary Joe Foley. The back of the book starts with Paul's tip of the week. So, uh, unlike Mary Joe, <laughs> I, I use uh, Office regularly, in particular Word, but also uh, OneNote. And it's it's one of those things like I kind of can't live without, but I wonder sometimes whether that's you know, habit or tradition and not actual need. I mean, even as a professional writer of sorts, I mean, even when writing books, I mean, I, I don't think I use 5%, you know, 10%. Or I don't know the features of this thing. And, you know, I, I sort of regularly recommend Office 365 and I talk about these things on a certain level, but a lot of people uh, who write into me about this stuff are saying, you know, I can use this, I can do this, this is free, you know, why not? when I try different things. So I started looking around at free office alternatives and there are the obvious ones, you know, the open office type applications that you can download to your hard drive. But I, honestly, I think if you were going to move off office at this point in time, the point should be not to have to install another heavy big thing on your computer. It should be, you know, what's a more elegant way of doing this kind of thing. And uh, interestingly, the two that are the best are the Microsoft one, of course, my office online, which is free to anyone, which is actually pretty fantastic. Uh, but lacks a couple of uh, basic features that I actually do kind of need. And then uh, Google Docs. And um, Google Docs was also, in a very impromptu and unscientific uh, survey on Twitter, was also by far the one that most people were using, which should concern anyone at Microsoft. But um, in using Google Docs this past week, I actually wrote several articles with it. I used it in offline mode. I tried, different, uh, tried it on different computers and everything. It's interesting how it works. And I'm probably never going to write this up because it's kind of a, it's kind of it's just like past the edge of the type of thing that I think is is maybe useful for my audience. But it's actually possible to configure Google Docs to use the same fonts and uh, as Office does. And so the documents create you create look exactly like Office documents. You know the same heading styles and everything. 
uh, word spacing or paragraph spacing and, and so forth. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's probably something that no one else cares about but me. But I, it actually made my experience using Google Docs um, disturbingly okay. <laughs> it was kind of strange. But anyway, I wrote an article about this. I'm probably going to follow it up with some more information about this thing, this kind of thing. But, you know, you were taught, we were talking earlier about Dropbox integration uh, with Office Online, which is that free web-based office thing I was just talking about. You know, that kind of capability is very interesting uh, because it allows you to mix and match software in the cloud, you know, not, not just software that's on your computer. Um, Google doesn't offer that. There are third-party ways to kind of synchronize Google Drive with, um, you know, Dropbox and probably other uh, online cloud services. But I find that capability in Office to be very kind of friendly and open. And it's very interesting that that works. And it works, it works very, very well uh, to the tune of you can, if you just think of the, your world in terms of Dropbox, you could go to Dropbox on the web, double click on files and they open in, in Word or Excel or PowerPoint online. It's, it's actually a very powerful capability. And so I was just, I was just kind of uh, in the article, I'm not going to go into all of it here, but I, I stepped through a bunch of the, the free alternatives to paid office. And there's actually a bunch of them. Who knew? <laughs> I guess, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I pay for Office 365, so I, I sort of think of the, I, it. To me, like this stuff just comes as part of something I pay for. I don't know. But, um, and then the software pick is, <laughs> you may recall last week, uh, my, my pick was uh, Office Remote for Windows Phone, and I described it as one of the few remaining uh. Microsoft mobile apps that was unique to Windows Phone. <laughs> the next day, the next day, <laughs> they released it for Android. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's available on Android. And it doesn't just do PowerPoint remoting. Uh, it's not just remote control for PowerPoint. It's actually a way to remotely control um, Office applications. I think it has to be Office 2013 on a PC uh, with, a, with a device. You could, I don't know, like, well, I guess I could imagine a few reasons why you might want to remotely control a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. But I think the big one is obviously for presentations. I'm a little surprised there wasn't an iOS version of the app released. In fact, we, we were talking earlier about how that stuff tends to happen on iOS first. This is the rare, perhaps unique instance, aside from lock screen type apps, where a Microsoft Office app has appeared on Android before it appeared on iOS. So that's kind of interesting. So anyway, <laughs> it's another reason not to use Windows Phone. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. Aw, poor Paul. Yep. Uh, Let's, one day later, Leo. Yeah, one take long day. Still don't have it for iOS though. There's always that. <laughs> it's, I, I actually keep. I check every day. I'm, it has to happen yeah, anytime. It must be working. I can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's delve into our enterprise pick of the week. Ooh. Nice, nice segue. Yeah, see, I'm working on them. <laughs> Getting better. You're back, um, baby. I'm back. <laughs> Although this also is very much in the vein of Paul's pick here. It's about Delve, which is kind of like Microsoft's Flipboard for businesses. It's a it's a it's an app and a service that arranges your contact information and other pieces of information pertinent to you in card form. So it looks kind of like Flipbook. Yeah. Uh, but the news this week is Microsoft has come out with mobile app versions of Delve for iOS and Android. And not for Windows Phone yet. <laughs> so, it's another one of those. Yeah. Uh, but if you're using iPhone or Android phones or even Android Wear, they're, they're even supporting Android Wear with this, you'll be able to now sync up with your Delve uh, backend and get information about files that you're sharing with other people and eventually with more information about your contacts and what's going on in your uh, shared groups and SharePoint and, and information like that. So that's that's kind of an interesting thing. They're taking that capability cross-platform now. Uh, and it also related to Delve, they uh, are rolling out some Office 365 backend improvements to Delve right now for people who already have it. There's new advanced uh, people search capabilities built in. So it's going to be easier to find information about your contacts and to find your contacts. Uh, and also they're adding blogging support to the platform so that if you're on Delve, you'll be able to write blog posts as part of your uh, profile. Kind of interesting as well. That's neat. Yep. When you say Flipboard, do you mean Flipboard or do you mean Pinterest? I mean, it's kind of a little bit of both. It's I kind guess. of a little of both. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Kind of a cross between those yeah. two things. Yeah, yeah cool. Yep. Uh, and your code name of the week, I love it. 
Codename of the week is Kratos. Is that the correct pronunciation? I video don't game read fans. Comic books. <laughs> also a video called? game too, is I it, guess. Is it what is it? Kratos? 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 Kratos. Um anyway, the code that is the code name. And um I guess there's even a, a video of Kratos or Kratos fighting Master Chief somewhere out there. Ooh. So um Kratos, I think, um, is well, I know it is the code name for something called Power Apps at Microsoft, but what Power Apps is is a little bit up in the air. I found a couple of job descriptions on their career site talking about Power Apps, and the way it was described makes me think it may be microservices related so that it may have something to do with the idea of making it simpler for developers, especially non-professional developers, to pull together APIs and applications that uh, may be in container form and kind of hook them together and make new kinds of apps. Um, the job descriptions talk about mobile first, cloud first, you know, the favorite Microsoft buzzwords. And when I asked Microsoft about it, they just clammed up and said, we have nothing to share. Hmm. Uh, so I think, I think maybe we could hear more about this at either Build or Ignite. That's my guess. Hmm. So keep your ears... Ears peeled for Kratos. Keep my eels peeled. I'll keep well. my eels peeled too. Eels peered. <laughs> eels peered. Eels peered. Eels peering. <laughs> Next on Windows Weekly. <laughs> Finally, it's beer time and a little bit of a sessionable beer for spring. Yes. Yes. Um, this be beer is from Victory Brewing. It's called Victory Kirsch Goes. And Goes beers are these very light, almost like Berliner Weiss style beers that are kind of salty. I like those, yeah. Yeah, and they combined in this beer a cherry, like a sour cherry with the goes. And when I first saw it, it's very pink. Um, I, I was thinking I wasn't going to like this too mm. much, but it's really refreshing, really, really nice. And 4.8% um, alcohol. 4.8%, not so bad. Yeah, plus it's spalt yeah. spout. It's what? Spalt spout. Spalt spout. No hops. What? No hops? <laughs> spalt spout. <laughs> <laughs> is that a hop? What is or that? Is, what is that? <laughs> it's the hop. That's the hop. Huh? Do the spalt spalt hop. Spalt spalt. Let's all go to the hop. This is like <laughs> sprockets spalt, from spalt. SNL. It's like now spalt, is the spalt. time when we dance. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Kirsch yeah. goes. Ki well, you know Kirsch because that's strawberry or cherry. Right. But cherry, goza right? is yeah. G O S E. Right. I said like goza. Like goza. Goza. Where did you find this? Victory beer. You can find it in beer stores. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Neato. Yep. So can I talk about my contest? Yeah. What about it? Okay. So this is related to beer. Yeah. And if you're going to Ignite, Microsoft show um, in Chicago, the first uh, kind of like day zero there is Sunday. So anybody who's there on Sunday, we're having a little contest. We're going to have a beer podcast there. And it's, we're going to be some IT people. It's going to be me um, and the people who do the Patch and Switch podcast, Joey Snow and Rick Klaus. We're doing a podcast together just about beer and it's for IT people. So we're having a little contest where if you tweet something, only one tweet, the hashtag is beer IT, like beer it. You have to say in one tweet why you think so many IT pros love craft beer and we're going to pick the best 30 or so answers. And whoever wins gets to come to a private beer tasting with us. And we're going to have people from Lagunitas there. Wow. Um, and we're going to have a beer sommelier. And we're going to have free food and free beer and pairings. Nice. And it's going to be really awesome. So if you want to be in this contest, tweet to me. We use the hashtag BeerIT. And give me a reason why so many IT pros like craft beer. Sure and if you're a winner... I will tell you. Significant speculation <laughs> on that. Yes. There's many things you could say, yes. actually. <laughs> and it's at Mary Jo Foley, M-A-R-Y-J-O-F-O-L-E-Y. Yes. Um, what a good idea for a contest, too. I like that. Yeah. All it's right. going to be really great. Fun. It's a little private Sunday. Uh, you have to be free Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. in Chicago. And it's going to be very cool if you like craft beer. That's all I'm going to say. So is it in your experience the case that IT professionals drink beer? I think you're right. They do drink beer yes. in preference to other beverages. I feel like they do. Yeah. And many of them are home brewers as well, I've noticed. Yeah, our as IT Rick. guy, as you yeah. know, uh, Russell, Russell Tammany, right. Russell, spends yep. more money on the, the equipment. Who are musicians, you know, programmers. Like, they all tend yeah. to have the same. They like yeah. beer? You know, they're in the right 
mental kind of an intellectual curve or whatever. It's good. Yeah. It's interesting. Yep. Creative people. Yes. But don't tweet that. That's boring. Come up with a better. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, we're just creative. Fun. They're just exactly. better than the rest of yeah. you. That's all I'm saying. Right. Well, right. I'll tell you who's better than the rest of them. Paul Therata, Mary Jo <laughs> Foley. That's who. Love this show. Love you guys. If you uh, wish to watch live, you can. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Wednesday, 1800 UTC. Or you can get on-demand audio and video after the fact. See, we're both. We're an IPTV station and we're a downloadable content station. I guess you'd call it a podcast. I don't like that word. That word. sounds like an antitrust abuse. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish. I would I love to get prosecuted for antitrust. You are so You're dominant, You're bundling Laporte. an offline product with an online product, Mr. Laporte. <laughs> yes, we are. How dare you. Go to twit.tv slash WW to get your offline product. <laughs> it's like Here Maps. You can just download it. And yes, you don't have to be online to listen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, the availability of an offline product doesn't harm any of our online competitors. That's I don't right. understand. Uh, that's right. There are plenty of choices in podcasts. <laughs> the pod competition is still swift. <laughs> right. There are more podcasts today than there were when we started this that's podcast. That's right. There should be no question in your mind. Of course, we are the best. You can also find us on all the places that they aggregate those things called podcasts, as well as, uh, you know, a lot of the apps including Stitcher and Slacker and, you know, Gesundheit and I don't know what that is, and po Pocket Casts and <laughs> Gesundheit. Gesundheit. Dot, dot, <laughs> dot, net. dot info. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Therott Mary is at uh, therott.com, T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T.com. Mary Jo Foley is at allaboutmicrosoft.com. And this show is, as I said, at twit.tv slash WW. We thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye.